Hello YouTube, thank you for clicking through. You're about to watch an informative new video from XYZ Print, but before you do, 01206 7 47 or hello at xyz.co.uk. They're the two best ways for you to get in contact with us about your next project. If you need a print quote, if you need any help or advice preparing your artwork, ping us an email or give us a call. We'll be happy to help you transform your ideas into print. And now, Here's the video you've been looking forward to watching. Welcome to the definitive guide to printing a degree show catalog at XYZ. We're gonna give you a wealth of information, ideas, and insight to make this guide the perfect companion when you have your group meetings about this year's publication. At XYZ, we've been printing degree show catalogs for 14 years, so we do know a little bit about what works and what doesn't. We're gonna show you the almost infinite options for binding, paper types, sizes, and for creating a boundary pushing front cover for your book. There are numerous deep dive sections within this video to highlight specific aspects of designing, styling the catalog, including a look at our top three catalogs of all time and what made them work so well. Before producing this video, we've gone through literally each and every previous catalog we can find on our sample shelving. They've been assessed and dissected to enable us to show you the best examples of page layout, premium cover choices, and overall visual language. We really are gonna showcase the winning print specs and provide you with a great set of tips and pointers to ensure your book looks as good as possible this year. Over the years, we've been fortunate enough to print the Grease Show catalogs for all of the top universities from Falmouth to Glasgow. All of the London colleges regularly use XYZ, as well as many provincial colleges, Lincoln, Coventry, Birmingham, and Loughborough. They are all exceptional creative cold faces producing great work each year. The catalogue forms a visual reminder of your work that they can look at on the train home or discuss with fellow staff in meetings after the show's taken place. Degree shows themselves can be a busy, bustling environment and that one or two seconds that the visitor gets to check out your display boards isn't really enough to do them justice. So printing an accompanying book means that they have a permanent recollection of your work to draw back on at a later date. We can also print postcards, business cards and promotional leaflets to also accompany the catalogue and give something else for people to take away with them at the end of the show. Ultimately, the catalogue is creating a legacy of the work that you've produced in the three to five years at university, so you want to display it in the best visual form possible. No pressure, but this book might well be seen by your kids, your friends, your entire family, as well as hundreds of potential employers, agencies and companies in the UK and around the world. This could really be the rocket that instigates your design career taking off and we'll work with you to make sure that the catalogue is as good as possible. So without further ado, enough talking, let's get started. Okay, so our definitive guide on degree show catalogue printing, let's get started with your choices on pages and binding. So the number of pages dictates the type of binding or does the binding dictate the number of pages? Chicken and egg, egg and chicken. So here we've got MA Visual Arts Printmaking Catalogue from Camberwell College of Arts. And this is a compact 36 page booklet, four page cover, 32 inside pages. And you can see it's wire stitched. Wire stitching means stapling. So we put two staples down the spine to bind the pages together. Staples are always visible. We use silver staples. Here we've got the AUCB illustration catalogue and you can see this is slightly thicker. So this is perfect bound. So the inside pages are roughened up on the left hand edge, glue is applied and then the cover is wrapped around and attached. So two different choices of binding, stapling, wire stitching or perfect binding. So stapling is the process of binding, we say up to 40 pages 40 pages is where you start to get a bit of a curl in the middle and plenty of bounce. If you go over 40 pages, in theory, we can go up to 72, but if you went for 72 pages and stapling, you'd expect the cover to ping open, the inside pages to bounce open as well. And because the inside pages will be starting from a lot further away from the staples, they actually get trimmed a lot shorter the nearer they get to the center of the book. 
The cover is going to be the actual size in this example A5, but the inside pages will be trimmed shorter to ensure that they arrive flush on the outer edge. So any page numbers or content as you get nearer the centre of the book, you have to really move that away from the trim edge to ensure that it doesn't run the risk of actually falling off the edge of the page. So why stitching? You have to have a multiple of four pages for it to work. If we have a look at this example here, you can see that when a sheet is printed on both sides and folded in half, you get four pages of content. One, two, three, four. So it's folded in half, four pages of content. So for this process, you need multiples of four. So you can go for eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36 and 40. It's not possible therefore to print a 25 page wire stitch booklet because you'd have 24 pages that are bound in and you just have one sheet just floating around, just floating around loose. So you can have a 17 page booklet, it's got to be a multiple of four. So again, when we quote, you'll see that we're quoting for a four page cover and that is because the cover onto the thicker paper stock normally has four pages of content, front cover, inside front cover, inside back cover, and back cover. So it's a four page cover. Same applies with the Perfect Bound book. Four page cover is the front cover, inside front cover, inside back cover, and back cover. And all of those go onto a thicker paper stock normally than you use for the inside pages. If you did want them onto the same, we call it a self cover. So you could have a 20 page self cover wire stitch booklet where all the pages, for example, were onto 115 uncoated or 130 silk. That would make a nice compact booklet that sat flat on the desk. Obviously, it is a little bit more flimsy because you don't have the thicker cover. So perfect, perfect binding starts at 40 pages. 40 pages means you have a four page cover and 36 inside pages and that gets you to a three mil spine which is just about thick enough for us to apply a layer of glue and for the spine to be thick enough to hold the pages in. We then attach the cover and you'll see here the mechanics of the cover. It's glued to the first and last of the text pages and it forms a six to eight millimeter hinge. This allows the cover to open up smartly and easily for the reader without them having to apply too much pressure. So you can see the hinge here impedes on that first text page. So you really want to keep any content six to eight mil away from that side of the page to avoid it being completely hidden. But realistically, if you've got logos or text that you want the reader to actually digest, you probably want to start them 15 to 20 mil away from that side of the page so they don't have to force the cover down really really firmly to actually be able to see the content same at the back of the book the acknowledgement here the at the tail of the s is really close to the edge but if you keep any important logos or content 15 15 to 20 mil from that side it's going to seat it's going to sit on the page really well So there are your two options for binding, wire stitching up to 40 pages, perfect binding 40 pages or more. The advantage of wire stitching, as you can see, you can actually press the pages completely flat. So you don't lose any content or any information on the double page spreads. With perfect binding, You've got two or three mil in the center of the pages, which we call the spine gutter. And this is discussed on our perfect binding setup guide online as well. You can find that in the resource section on our website. Two to three mil on each side of a double page spread is kind of obscured and lost because again, you really don't want the reader to be forcing down the front cover of the book too much. It will risk breaking the spine. So if you've got images that are double page spreads, you can cheat a little bit. In InDesign, you can split the image into two. You nudge the left hand half left by two mil and the right hand half right by two mil. And on the finished book, it gives the illusion that they meet up. 
even though on the file it will look a little bit funky because you'll have some of the image duplicated through the center. But when it's printed and you lose that section in the middle there, it does mean that it does visually look like it's gonna meet up to the reader. I think that's everything on the page count and the binding. At the top end of perfect binding, you can go for however many pages you need really. This one for goldsmiths, it's probably three or 400 pages. We can go super, super chunky. This one's over two centimeters thick. Uh, it's A4 as well, which means the pages do open up a little bit easier than they would do on uh, like a more compact, perfect bound book. This one for Kingston, again, is 100, uh, 220 pages. Because it's A6, it's, it's a lot harder for the reader to press the pages down. However, this is very compact. It's a nice little degree show catalog A6 size. Another example here of wire stitch catalog, again for Camberwell. Again, this is 32 inside pages. So there's a slight curl there. You do have to expect that. Paper does prefer to be flat. When it's folded, it always tries to bounce a little bit. Once the booklet's read, it's very rare that the cover will actually sit flat again. It always tries to get away from the text block. We can sit here and say that it's possible to um, eradicate that, but realistically it isn't. Um, paper's a natural material and you will have to allow for it. It's not an error. It just gives the publication a little bit of extra charm. Again, we can see on the wire stitch version, that the pages sit completely flat and you don't lose that area in the spine gutter. So that is an advantage of why stitching your booklet. Let's move on to the potential size of your catalog. So here we've got a selection of sizes of degree show catalogs. We'll talk through them. So you can choose any size from A6 portrait up to A4 portrait or even A4 landscape. You can increase to A3 portrait, but there is a definite price point cut off at A4. Anything larger than that is significantly more expensive because we have to print it onto one of our B2 presses. So unless you're intending to go for something oversized, we'll stick here to discussing possibilities that fall between A6 and A4. So you can go for any bespoke size for no extra cost. If you want to trim a centimetre off a standard A size, that's absolutely fine. We don't charge extra for bespoke. So for reference, A6 is 148 millimetres high by 105 millimetres wide. A4 is 297 millimetres high by 210 millimetres wide. Any bespoke size between A6 and A4 for no extra cost. So the cutoffs in terms of pricing are A6 to A5. That's one price bracket. And then anything larger than A5 up to A4, that's the next price bracket. And then again, there's a big jump up, larger than A4 up to and including A3 portrait. However, on larger print runs, where you, we might litho print your work, so for 700 copies or more, then 240 high by 170 millimeters wide, is a very convenient and cost-effective size that be, falls between A5 and A4. So that's also a good size to aim for. On digital print runs, any size between A5 and A4 is the same price. On litho, this is a nice cost-effective size as well. A5 is a definite go-to size for degree show catalogues, however. A large percentage of catalogues are A5, and that's simply because it's large enough to include students' work at a decent size, and it's also small enough to fit in your visitors' pockets when they leave the show. So A5 is 210 millimeters high by 148 millimeters wide. Here we've got A5 portrait and A5 landscape. Bespoke size, small wire stitched booklet of 148 by 148 square. So this works really well if you've got a smaller course, just a handful of students. Each student can have a single page. 
and it forms a really compact little booklet. Obviously the size of the page goes some way to dictating the amount of content you can have on there. Architecture courses in particular have quite fine intricate drawings and maybe that lends itself better to A4 where there's more room on the page to have the drawings at a larger size without having to cram them into a smaller page size and the intricacy of the drawings then not being quite as impactful. A5 landscape is a really nice size that works well for both portrait and landscape images. Maybe this is the actual winning formula. Right hand page for an image, well laid out text on the left hand side, use of colour on the name, it's compact, appropriate size for text. Don't be scared with including white space on your work. The text doesn't have to be kind of huge in the reader's face to actually have an impact. And the white space does work really well. So that's the sizing. So any size from A6 up to A4, any bespoke size in between, A5 is your go-to. That's what you'll find that a large percentage of the Grisha catalogues are A5. If there's something in particular that you want, ping us an email and we can send over a quote for it. We try to be as flexible as possible. We're not gonna tell you what size your catalog should be. If there's something in particular that you like, then I'm sure we can print it. We appreciate there's a good chance you'll work into a budget. So you may have to go for one of the smaller sizes to be able to fit within that budget. If there is a specific price point you need us to hit, then maybe get in touch and say, look, we've got a budget of X amount and we really want to print this many copies. And then we can reverse engineer it from there and we can say, OK, well, in that case, you can have this many number of pages. Or maybe you want to say we've got a budget of this amount and we really need this number of pages for the amount of students. And then we can tell you exactly how many copies you'll be able to print for within your budget. There's a couple of ways to do it. We'd rather print your catalogue than not print it. So let us know what you're working towards in terms of costs and we can work it back from there. Let's look at some bespoke sizes then. So the book that we've got at the back here for Birmingham, the blue one is A4, and the Central St Martins one at the front is A5. So the other three catalogues between are bespoke sizes. So the Central St Martins is A5. Coventry one is 220 high by 170 wide. Loughborough is 240 high by 170 wide. Tonic for UWE, is 270 high by 210 wide, so the same width as A4, and the Birmingham one at the back, 297 by 210. So like we said, once you get larger than A5, you can have any bespoke size up to and including A4 for the same price. If you are gonna go for a longer print run, and we're gonna litho print your book, so so litho printing works out more cost effective once you go over 700 copies. That's where our litho presses are gonna be cheaper than our digital presses. So 700 copies or more, the 240 by 170 size is a really convenient size between A5 and A4. The size that we buy our sheets from the paper mill, this fits really, really neatly onto them. So we can do a really good price on this size. But if you're going for under 700 copies, we'll print them digitally and any size between A5 and A4 will be the same price. Next up, we're going to touch on to the actual print process and full colour or black and white or spot colour printing. There are three options. So your absolute standard, basically 99.9% .9 of Degree Show catalogues are going to be printed in four colour which is cyan, magenta, yellow and black, CMYK, to, to abbreviate it. Four colour printing, also full colour printing. It might be how we send it over on... Also full colour printing might be how we send it over on the quote, just for ease and for make it easier for you to understand. Full colour printing all the way through 
like I say, 99.9% .9 of degree show catalogues, you're gonna be printing like this. One option would be to print it in black ink only. As you can see here on the front cover of the Birmingham illustration one. Um, so you'd have to convert all of your images to grayscale in Photoshop, or maybe maybe all of the illustrations or the photography might actually be grayscale already. Um, here we can see again, black print only. So rather than printing CMYK, we're literally just using the black ink to go down on the page. As you're probably gonna have 40 to 100 students on your course, I'm not sure how that would work with all of them, um, but that is an option. Black and white printing is cheaper than CMYK although your images aren't gonna have the same sort of vibrancy in the black as they do on screen, where the blacks are a lot punchier. Just move that to the side. Next option would be printing with a spot color in addition to CMYK. So here we have a copper metallic spot color. So spot color is an extra ink that we add into one of the ducts on the press. So you can mix it up, you can choose a Pantone color, which is then mixed to a precise spot color. So you don't have to worry about being able to manufacture the color out of the four cyan, magenta, yellow and black inks. You can choose a precise color and the ink is made to that color. So here the copper metallic spot color is used throughout as a vehicle to give uniformity. So each student had to convert one of their images to this copper metallic color printed onto their page. So as you flick through, there's elements of it on each and every page throughout the book. Quite a unique approach. Maybe one of the only times we've seen this, but it does mean your eye is drawn to it as you go through the book because you're always looking, it's kind of like, where's Wally? You're always looking for where it appears on the page. The spot color is then also used for the dividing pages. So it is quite a nice vehicle as you flip through. Printing in five color as it is, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, plus the spot color is more expensive than just four color. It's only something we can do on our Litho press. So again, if, if you're going for 700 copies or under, it's not something you need to worry about. If you're going for a longer print run, more copies, you could consider it. Final option we'll touch on here is what Camberwell did for complete unity as a course. They printed the entire catalogue in one spot colour. So they've used this blue all the way through, one Pantone blue for the entire catalogue, no other colours at all. So this really epitomised the fact that the catalogue is a memento and to see the actual piece of artwork you had to attend the exhibition in this catalogue none of the artwork is going to match the original piece because it's printed in blue but it does make for a very visually cohesive catalogue each page has that complete uniformity again this was the only example that we could find of this in 14 years so it's a unique approach you're really going to have to debate it as a group of students about whether you wanted all of your artwork com converted into one colour. Um, but that's a decision that we'll leave with you. So there are four choices here. Black and white only. Full colour is very much the standard. Five colour. So CMYK plus one spot or one colour, which is one spot colour all the way through. For the large percentage of you, you won't even need to worry about the other three options. Just focus on printing it in full colour. It means the artwork can be reproduced exactly as it is on your original work. Uh, it's cost effective. Uh, it's just an effective solution. Next up, we have your paper choices, and these are really going to affect the overall aesthetic of your catalogue. So we've got three basic choices to choose from, which are silk, uncoated, and gloss. So there are three basics. So silk, for your inside pages, 130 GSM would be the standard, but you can go from as light as 100 gram up to as thick as 170 gram for the inside pages, which is nice and premium. For the cover, uh, 300 GSM is the standard. 
but you could go for 200 for a flimsy silk cover, which would be nice and easy to open and for the reader to turn. Slight increase on that would be 250. 300 is very much the go-to. 350 can be even slightly too rigid, to be honest. So we would probably say limit it at 300 gram. So silk is a professional looking paper. The images that you print onto silk will jump off the page. They're gonna be nice and colorful. It's got a smooth surface, smooth bright white surface. So the ink on that is gonna look as close as possible to how it does on screen. You always have to allow for a little bit of allowance between an RGB screen though and CMYK printing. But silk is a very solid choice for the inside pages. Uncoated, ever so slightly brighter white than our silk, but it's got a matte coating. So when people come through and they ask for a matte paper, this is what we'll quote for. It's got no sheen, so the ink does soak in a little bit more than it does onto silk, but it's bright white, so the colour reproduction is still good. Um, 115 GSM would be your go-to for the inside pages, but again, we can increase as chunky as 170 gram or drop down to as light as 90 GSM, which is more kind of photocopier paper. The front cover, again, 300 GSM is the standard. For a flimsier uncoated cover, you can go for 200 gram or 240 or 250. And for a really, really chunky, rigid cover, you could go for 350 GSM, but that's probably overkill. It is bright white, so the ink does sit on there really nicely. Um, it's a more tactile finish. It doesn't have very much of a texture. It is smooth, and we'll be honest, we do really try to avoid printing onto textured papers, just because the actual surface of the paper itself doesn't accept the ink very well. The ink can pick off just because you've got the rough area on the paper. So if you did want a slightly more tactile catalog, then do go for our house uncoated. Final basic choice is gloss, which is exactly as the name suggests. It's glossy, it's shiny. The images are gonna be really, really vibrant. You'll probably find a couple of instances on our website where we do kind of almost take the mick out of other printers who only print onto gloss. You ask them for something a little bit funky or a little bit off kilter and they go, no, we only print onto gloss. So we've been taking the mick out of these other print companies for a number of years now and probably single-handedly killed the amount of gloss paper that the paper mills are selling. But because of that, we hardly ever see gloss printed jobs and they are coming back into fashion a little bit more now. They do look quite cool. Your images are gonna be nice and vibrant, but it is shiny, so text doesn't sit on there very well. Text might be slightly harder to read just because of the sheen on the paper. Again, 130 gram for your inside pages, 300 gram for the cover. So they're the basic choices. In addition, we have Evolution Uncoated which is 100% recycled, slightly off-white. If you can compare it against our house paper, and it's incredibly hard to tell the difference between one white paper and another, but this has got a slightly gray background, uh, slightly off-white, slight grain in there as well. And this has ever so slightly more texture than our house uncoated. Also, if you're looking to tick the green box, like I said, it's 100% recycled. Again, it comes in a good, um, range of weights, 120 gram for your inside pages, up to 300 for the cover. If you go for a longer print run and you go for litho printing, um, there are 100% recycled litho options as well. Evolution Uncoated is digital. If you go for litho, we'll probably print it onto Revive, 100% recycled, very similar look, slight grain and slightly off-white as well. So what does the ink actually look like when it's printed onto these papers? So here we've got a silk catalog, gloss, and uncoated. So we'll start with the silk one, it's very much the standard. So this is a 300 gram silk with a matte lamination on the front cover. Now we always advise laminating the front cover of your catalog if the weight that you've gone for is 170 gram or more. Paper loves to sit flat and paper will take ink very happily when it's flat, but as soon as you start folding the front cover, the ink does tend to crack. So the fibers of the paper become exposed and it is the, the first thing that people see and it's not a particularly professional or great first appearance. So if we laminate the front cover of the book, it protects the fibers of the paper and it means that we can fold the paper and add the hinge here with no problems at all in terms of scuffing and cracking. I'll show you a couple of examples here 
where this has happened. So on this catalog, we've got a pink front cover, which didn't have a lamination on there. I'll try and tilt that towards the light. You can see that the fibers of the paper have just opened up and you end up with a white scuffed strip down the front cover. Lamination would have protected against that. Another example here, the black ink on the spine where there was no lamination. Soon as you start rubbing your finger over it, the black ink starts coming away because of the fibers of the paper are exposed. And it doesn't look that great. It looks like a mistake and it looks like the catalogs are older than they actually are, even though the reader might be the first person who's ever picked one up. So the lamination over the front adds that extra protection. So we've got a choice of matte lamination, gloss lamination. We have soft touch now, and we also have anti-scuff. Soft touch has a velvet kind of finish. This isn't a degree show catalog admittedly, but this has got a soft touch finish on it. So it's a slightly velvet finish. It does feel really nice, almost kind of plasticky. Um, again, protects the ink from cracking on the spine. And anti-scuff which is something we apply probably once a year, incredibly rare, uh, exactly what it says on the tin. It just means that it's not gonna pick up finger marks and it's not gonna scuff very much. Moving on to the second catalog here, we've got a awesome gloss lamination on the front cover. So the colors really, really jump off the page. I mean, it's a definite aesthetic that you have to consider whether you want to go for. You can see immediately here, the difference between the gloss and the uncoated. The printing on the uncoated is a lot softer. On the gloss, it really jumps towards the reader. It does make the colors a lot more vibrant though. And interesting on this one, they've actually gone for a gloss front cover with a gloss lamination, but the inside pages, they have actually gone for uncoated. So that makes quite a nice contrast as you open up the front cover. So we have the softer uncoated colors on the inside and the real bright, vivid colors on the front cover. Uncoated. As we've just touched on there, the colors are softer. They, they sit on the paper a lot more. They soak into the paper. So you do have to give us some leeway when you print onto uncoated paper that they're just not gonna look the same as they do on screen. The screen has got a backlit behind it, whereas paper obviously doesn't. It's more of a softer material and the inks do soak in. So the color consistency between printing onto uncoated and how it looks on your monitor isn't gonna be the same. No printer could achieve that. You do have to allow for a little bit of leeway, but the brilliant thing about having the exhibition as well is that people can come to the exhibition and they can see exactly how the original artwork looked on the wall and on your display stand. And then the catalog serves as a memento to take away and remind them of what the work looked like, but it won't be an accurate or an identical reproduction. So uncoated. Nice and tactile. Ravens Born here have gone for quite a thin front cover, a 170 or a 200 gram front cover, and then a 100 or 115 GSM for the inside pages. So you don't always have to go for the, the thickest option, the 300 gram or the 350. The 170 or the 200 here works really well, and it allows the reader to actually open the pages up more flat than they would have been able to had the cover been on a more rigid 300 gram. This would be 300 gram gloss with the gloss lamination, and this would be 300 silk with the matte lamination. So the color reproduction here on the silk, a lot more vibrant, jumps towards the reader, more striking than it is an uncoated. So it comes down to personal preference. Do you want to concentrate on the color reproduction and go for silk or gloss, or do you prefer the more malleable feel of how it would be if you go for uncoated. There is no right and wrong way, both work really well and our house papers are bright white so the ink does go down onto them and isn't as saturated as it is onto 100% recycled papers where the colour reproduction is more inconsistent. There's every chance at your university that you might well have been approached or visited by a rep from one of the paper mills, so maybe Antalis, who might have showed you Kie Colour or Pop Set and some of the other creative paper choices, or maybe a rep from GF Smith, who do three or four hundred different choices of papers, everything from really, really vibrant fluorescent papers through to ones that are made out of actual beer 
um, through to textured ranges where they apply an embossing over the entire sheet to give a different texture over the material. And of course their famous color plan range, which comes in 50 different color choices. So there's something for everybody in there to choose from. Really, really nice selection, the full spectrum of colors to go for. So we can see here Kingston 2016 Fine Art. They went for a couple of shades from GF Smith. Newcastle Fine Art as well. This is something that they go for every year. They print in two or three different shades within the entire print run. So I think they normally go for 1,000 or 2,000 copies split between two or three shades. So you get a few hundred copies of each one. And then the inside pages are the same all the way through. Just means that when people turn up then you've got a stack of books, gives them a bit of a decision to make about which color they want to go for. Be interesting to see which were the winning colors if you went for gray or you went for the bright green that we have here. So, th so these are for the pop set range. So they've gone pop set storm and they've got pop set spring green. The GF Smith papers are eminently more available than uh, some of the pop set and Kia color ones. Some of these do take two or three weeks to arrive from the continent, whereas GF Smith are based in the Lake District and they tend to come in one or two days. So if you are on a tight time frame, head towards these instead. In terms of costing, these are, I'll be honest, significantly more expensive than our house papers are. So if there's any kind of issue of a budget not being hit within your course and within your group of students, then I would always lead you towards our house papers we can produce a brilliant looking catalogue on those, no problem at all. Maybe if we've done a quote for you and there's a bit more wiggle room, then you could consider going for one of these papers. Um, but they do jump the price up quite a lot. That said, they do look stunning. And the Goldsmiths catalogue here, you'll struggle to find a cooler, more arresting or dramatic front cover than if you go for Ebony Black from Colourplan. And here they've added the white foil over the top of it as well, which adds a really, really nice contrast. So 350 GSM, ebony black color plan, white foiling over the top. And this one, they've also got gloss spot UV varnish. If you look really, really close, it's quite subtle on there. Parataxis uh, from Birmingham University has gone for a real gray color plan cover. And they've got black print over the top and they've also gloss spot UV varnished. Some of the letter forms within their masthead there which looks really, really cool. The contrast between the um, uncoated color plan with the slight texture and the shiny gloss spot UV varnish does look very, very effective. We're gonna do a real deep dive though onto gray front covers shortly. So uh, stay tuned for that. So to wrap up the paper guide, if you want a vibrant, punchy, colorful front cover, then we'll lead you towards silk or gloss finish. Uh, you've got three options for lamination. You've got matte lamination, gloss, uh, soft touch, or anti-scuff. If you want a more tactile front cover, then uncoated ticks the box. We've got evolution uncoated, which is 100% recycled. And they do go up in that order in price as well. Gloss and silk are gonna be the cheapest. Uncoated is fractionally more evolution uncoated is more than our house uncoated. Um, if you've got a bigger budget to play with, then do have a look at the premium papers from GF Smith, uh, Pop Set, Kie Color, um, and Talis McNaughton, um, but they are gonna jump your costs up quite considerably. And that's the end of the paper section, but as we go through the showcase section of this guide as well though, obviously the paper is gonna play a big part when we're dissecting what works and what doesn't work. So keep watching. And you'll see immediately that there might be some publications that you go, that's exactly what we need. In which case you can just ping us an email or we might even put up the spec during the video guide and you can just replicate exactly what that previous year group had done for your publication this year. So if you have a slightly bigger budget, then there are loads of really stunning premium options that we can put on the front cover of your Degree Show catalogue to make the content pop and to make your book really stand out against a huge swathe of other catalogues that people are gonna be picking up in May, June, and July. So there are four processes that you could add to the front cover of your catalogue. So you can go for foiling, 
you can go for embossing or debossing, you can go for gloss, spot UV varnish, or you could even have a die cut. So I'll guide you through each of those four processes, show the different effects that can be achieved with each. Before we start, as a costing indication, each of these processes has a base price of £280 to set up the necessary plates or dies for them. So £280 covers you for applying the process to one or 500 sheets. So basically, if you've got 499 sheets, then the price is gonna be the same as it is for just one copy. So it makes the cost a lot more palatable on bigger print runs uh, than it does for, for example, your final major project where you might only be getting a handful of copies and that 280 is gonna add a massive amount to the price. But if you're going for 500, 1,000, 2,000 copies of your degree show, then the 280 is far less of a add-on than it is on a smaller handful. So let's start by looking at the Degree Show catalogues, which have foiling on the front cover. Some really stunning examples here. You'll notice with all of these premium processes that they do work far better for large, flat areas or vector shapes. It's hard to get really fine, intricate details. So just go for bold text or fine graphics and they'll work a lot better. Now let's start with the first of our catalogues with foiling on the front cover, still one of our absolute favorites. It's the Central St. Martin's Fine Art Catalog. So it's likely for your catalog, there's gonna be an overall theme or visual language behind the degree show. So the vehicle that dictated the style of the Central St. Martin's catalog here was old school exercise books. That's what they really wanted them to look like. And they came up with an incredibly simple, but so effective lines across the front cover, which were gold foiled. So remembering back to school, you'd have your name and your class maybe in your form written on these lines. They wouldn't have been foiled, obviously, but the foiling is a really nice tip to those. Got gold foiling down the spine and on the back cover, you can see they've gone for the tables with maths calculations on there and scientific numbers that you might have found on the textbooks as well. It's really, really cool. And over the years, this has got a lot of praise. The actual degree show itself, the tutor said it sets a new benchmark for catalogue design from Central St. Martins, which when you consider the college has been going for decades and the caliber of the students that have gone there, that was a massive accolade. So they've gone for an off-white front cover. The actual card they use for the front covers here isn't available anymore, but I'm sure we can get something similar for you from Popset or GF Smith. And then we've got the gold foiling over the top. Here, Nottingham Trent, have gone for gold foiled chunky text. This is the name of their show for that particular year, Emerge, and also the name of the college. So this is onto 350 gram silk with matte lamination over the outside again to stop the black ink cracking and then the foiling over the top. Really punchy though, gold foil, immediately obvious. Even more obvious than that, clearly, is the Goldsmiths MFA Fine Art Catalogue from a couple of years ago and they've just gone for a huge rectangle of foil uh, on the front cover, so it almost acts as a mirror when the reader's looking into it. In all honesty, probably too large a foil area because you can see that it is starting to scratch in there. Foiling is a lot better when it's limited to smaller areas. Another example of foiling, again, is just picking out the masthead or the college name or your particular title for the degree show. So it's gold foil. Uh, there are loads and loads of color options on foil. I think there's kind of a couple of hundred to choose from. Um, gold foil, silver and copper are gonna be the cheapest, um, but there are all different colored foils as well. Rather than going printing metallic ink, you could foil some text or a logo and it just jumps off the page a little bit more because it's got the metallic edge. Whereas even metallic ink, it doesn't have that effect because it soaks into the paper where foil kind of just sits on the surface and it really, really, really jumps off. So gloss spot UV varnishing is the process of picking out a graphic or a name or a logo on the front cover 
and just that area alone is given a varnish to differentiate it between that area and the background of the paper itself. So on the Goldsmiths Matter one here, we've got white foil there in the top right hand corner and we've got gloss spot UV varnish. So as you tilt it towards the light, really shimmers. You can see the graphics come to life. When you look at the book flat, they're not immediately obvious, but when tilted, if you rub your hand over there, ever so slightly pronounced. And on the Glasgow Product Engineering catalog here, they've got their logo gloss spot varnish. So the background is matte laminated and then the gloss varnish over the top differentiates itself from the background. Loads of examples to discuss for debossing and embossing. So embossing is where some content comes towards the reader. So it's pushed through from the back towards the reader, like we can see here on the Chelsea 10 catalogue. So it's pushed through from the back of the card towards the reader, that's embossing. Debossing is where the content is pushed from the front to the back of the card. So the content goes into the surface of the paper and debosses away from the reader. So the Newcastle Fine Art one here, Newcastle Fine Art do produce some really great catalogues. This is an impressive tome. It's like a piece of antique sculpture and it's almost got like an inscription with a castle wall on the front cover. It's picked out a really smart logo, nice typeface, and it does look like it's done in stone, the embossing on the front cover of this one. No print on the cover, it's just the mark itself. This is a colour plan vermilion that they've used on the front cover. And also the effect of embossing there, as you can see on the reverse of the card, it pushes away, so you get kind of the negative relief as well. So you get the embossed cover and then you have the same thing printed on the first leaf. Very smart design. Chelsea have picked out a large typeface here and embossed it towards the reader and a smaller UAL logo in the corner. And again, you get the relief on the inside page. Very tactile, very impressive. Goldsmiths here have the title of the course on the front cover in black ink. And then they have the plus between the fine art and the art history embossed as well. Very cool. University of Brighton. Nice, simple white background on the cover with a neat professional emboss over the top. So as you look at it from a distance, you just presume it has only got University of Brighton on there. The closer that you get, we have the tactile embossing. Commentary catalog, commentary photography from last year, nice bespoke size. And then we have, what's the weather like? It's abbreviated to just the four letters and that's debossed on the front cover of their catalog. So you're getting a feel here that simple lines of text work really well with these processes. You don't have to reinvent the wheel and go over the top. Less is often more with the premium processes. The actual process is striking and eye-catching itself. So the content can be a lot simpler for, and it can still work. Loughborough Graphic Design. We'll talk about this in more detail later, but they have Loughborough BA Graphic Communication and Illustration debossed on the front cover. They've gone for 350 gram silk and they've gone for soft touch lamination over the top. The front cover of this one feels majestic. Really, really nice to rub your hands over it. So debossing here, again, nice chunky typeface. They've actually gone for spot colour pink as well. It's hard to get a colour this vibrant by printing in CMYK. So the use of the spot colour really makes that pink pop. Very, very impressive, this catalogue. 
bespoke size 240 by 170 and debossing on the front cover. Birmingham graphic design gone for a similar aesthetic as well. So a series of words down the page, applied, started, created, failed, learned, developed, improved, finished, graduated, career progression at the university, and they're all debossed into the front cover again. Final premium process to talk about is on these neat A5 catalogues, and they've actually die cut a shape out of the back cover. So the purpose of this is that it shows the course's brand color, which is the salmon color through the window. Again, this is gonna work particularly well with large areas and very pronounced shapes. You're not gonna be able to die cut letter forms really because when you start die cutting an E or an A for example, you're gonna lose the section in the middle which actually makes the letter legible. So this is gonna work far better on logos and vector shapes. This was the only example of this that we could find from 14 years, so it's not a very popular choice. Um, for a premium option, you probably are better going for something like embossing or foiling, die cutting maybe for your leaflets or for your invites to the show. So you can see here some really winning suggestions for use of the premium options on your front cover. A split between white backgrounds and color backgrounds. Obviously, if you're gonna go for one of these premium options, you don't have to work quite as hard with the design because the premium option itself adds an extra dimension to it. Loughborough here with the debossing, I mean, this is about as perfect as it gets. We'll talk about it in more detail, like I said. We've got the printed pink background for Swansea. We've got Newcastle using this awesome kind of stone-like mark on the front cover of their catalog, and they've gone for GF Smith color plan to add the red, whereas John Moores have printed the red on theirs and then added the spot UV varnish over the top. Brighton have gone for the die cutting. Very unique to have that on any book a degree show catalogue but we appreciate you're a group of students and you really want to push the boundaries so if there's something that you've thought about for your front cover that you want to find out whether it is possible then get, do get in touch either on the phone or on email and we'll be happy to talk it through we could probably send you some links over or some photos if similar effects have been tried in the past we'll let you know whether it will work or not as you get nearer to lift off do send over a work in progress file of how you'd like your cover to look and we can also flag up whether it will lend itself well to the process that you're intending. You can always just refine it down slightly. All of the premium processes tend to take four or five working days, so they're not something that can be rushed. If you do send over a work in progress file beforehand, then we can hit the ground running when it is time to go ahead with the catalogue, um, send it over kind of a week or two before you're ready to go ahead, and then that means we can just tweak it, we can make amends, and we can give you some expert opinion about whether that process is gonna lend itself well to the artwork that you've designed. If not, we can maybe have a rethink or just kind of fine tune it a little bit and make sure that it is spot on. Moving on to the next section of our guide, now we're gonna look at design and styling of your catalogue. We're gonna start with front covers, so what makes some winners? What makes some less appealing? Do you want to add the name of your course and your theme for the year to the front cover? Do you want to keep it minimal and just include graphic elements? Some colleges go for a set of different covers, so they might print a longer print run like we saw with the Newcastle ones where they print one or 2,000 copies and they split the cover design between two or three, four different colorways. Or maybe a few of the courses want to get together and you want to come up with like a cohesive design that you follow across three or four courses within the university. If you all come through at the same time and print your books together, and for example, if you all printed 500 copies, uh, then we could definitely do a better price for printing the 2,000 in one go than if each four come through disjointedly and just place four separate orders. Also means that when people go to the degree show, like we can see here with Glasgow, they've gone for these design elements, sort of architectural type shapes, and it brings it all together as a, an entire university. So we'll start looking at these front covers. So if you have a look at the selection of front covers that we put out here, what immediately jumps out, which ones are kind of the most visually attractive, which ones are typographically strong, 
which colors have people used. Some of them have white backgrounds. Does that work? A lot of them have gray backgrounds. We'll start dissecting these now. Let's start with looking at the gray front covers. So going for a gray base on the front cover, it's a nice neutral shade. Doesn't draw the eye, but it does look professional and it does then mean that you can add other colors over the top and other accents within the catalog, which the gray sits against without clashing. So these are two particular favorites up here. So they've gone for strong typographic front covers and they've used this vehicle of having the oversized spine. So we've added a color. I think the UCA one came first and Nottingham Trent were probably heavily influenced by seeing that on our website. So you can see there's a slightly different shade. This is more going towards a yellow beige color, whereas the Nottingham Trent one is more of a gray. Strong typography. And then we have the oversized spine. So where the spine is five mil, we've actually added probably about an extra 12 mil either side, which looks really, really nice. Completely takes away the need to ensure that the spine matches up perfectly because it's wrapping around. So it's far easier to design that way as well. Very, forms a very neat front cover. Again, about a 12 mil wrap around on here. We have text down the spine. If you are gonna put text on the spine, always make sure it's neatly tucked within. If you have text that runs right to both of the edges and there's even one mil movement when we come to trimming, binding and folding the front covers, then you're gonna end up with your text wrapping around onto the front cover, which does look like a massive mistake. So if you've got a tiny spine, this one's about six or seven mil, just make sure your text is neatly tucked within the constraints of the spine. You probably want to allow a couple of them at the top and the bottom of the text before you get to the actual fold. And then if there is any movement, it's less apparent. And the Epsom one here, slightly neater. So the text on the spine doesn't have to be massive. I mean, you can get away with kind of six, seven point. Uh, it's just an indication, it's a little hint at people. But realistically, is a degree show catalog ever gonna be kept on the shelf? When you pick it up at the show itself, it's probably gonna be stacked in a pile. Um, so it's not gonna be something that people need to massively refer back to from a shelving unit afterwards. Um, but it's always, it always looks professional to have a bit of text on the spine there. Six or seven point is plenty. Like I say, it doesn't have to be massively overkill. So these are both really neat ones. So Manchester School of Art, they've gone for a gray printed cover as have University of Cambridge Architecture. So this is where we just use our standard 300 gram house uncoated, and then you could choose a shade of gray and print over the top of it. Now, nine times out of 10, this is gonna be far cheaper than going for an actual color plan gray. You can get some pretty close shades. Obviously, you've got a bit more flexibility even in the shade that you go for because you can use any of 100 different degrees of black ink to create a gray, whereas with color plan, you're limited to about four or five different gray choices that they supply. So printing the gray onto both sides as well does give the illusion that the catalog is, does have a gray cover. Uh, University of Cambridge have gone for a slightly lighter shade and then they've got these kind of eye-catching photographic end papers, if you like inside the front and the back cover, which might be a really nice vehicle for you to be able to put a photo of your entire course group on there, or maybe a prominent piece of work, or maybe a display for a particular project like they've done here with Cambridge, where each person has a bit of artwork on there. So immediately when you open up the cover, you're faced with quite a nice double page spread. So we've got uh, Camberwell here. They've gone for one of the GF Smith uh, greys, which is smoke. So obviously the tone is both sides of the paper. Actually gone for silk on the inside pages as well, which forms a nice contrast between the tactile front cover and then the smooth inside pages. And the silk lends itself really well to color reproduction. Nice neat 148 by 148 millimeter publication, this one. Goldsmiths have gone for a color plan. I think they might have changed this shade though, because we can't seem to find this in the book anymore. This is a, a sort of a mid gray maybe like a 35, 40% gray if you wanted to match it with ink. And then gone for the neat embossing on the front cover. But as you can see here, with the Birmingham Parataxis one as well and the Camberwell one, black ink onto these works really well. If you're gonna print the background, then obviously this section of the 
paper can be printed green because there's no bed behind it. But I don't think you'd really want to start printing colour onto one of the grey colour plans because the bed of the colour plan paper itself is really going to start washing out your images. It's not going to look anything like what it does on screen. So the cover obviously is going to draw people in. It's going to make them want to pick it up, make the cover look classy and approachable. Get across the points that you need to do. Do you want to put your college on there? Do you want to put the course on there as well? Black typography on the grey is going to work really well. We've spoken about before. Colour plans are for groups that have got a larger budget. If not, then you can still do a very effective grey front cover just by printing the grey onto either our house silk, house gloss or house uncoated. And that works out vastly cheaper than extending up to a premium paper. So we've got black text here and onto the colour plan we know we've got gloss spot UV varnish as well, which flickers and shimmers off the page and forms a nice contrast between the shiny gloss varnish and the colour plan background. This is colour plan real grey. So you can get some really nice effects with a grey front cover on your Degree Show catalogue. It looks classy, lends itself well to typography. Avoid putting images on there. Manchester here have gone for some vector shapes, which again works well. It might work really well if you've got an illustration course or an architecture course. Before we finish dissecting the grey front covers, we'll just introduce another couple here just to look at maybe what doesn't work quite well. So here we've got Manchester School of Art 2014 and they went for the grey front cover again, but they've printed it onto our house uncoated and then they've matte laminated the outside of it. Yeah, I'm just not sure that the, the grey with the matte lamination over has this particular grey anyway doesn't work quite as well as these two. There's a kind of there's like a slight sheen on it and you almost want to pick it up and expect it to be a nice really tactile grey but with the lamination over the top and this particular shade of grey it doesn't work anywhere near as well as their later catalogue here in 2017 or the Nottingham Trent Threads one which is just a nicer grey. Um, the embroidery catalogue here as well Obviously, we'll some people have never printed before. We fully appreciate that. And we're going to do whatever we can to help you get your work into print. They've used the large oversized typography as a vehicle for then dropping in some of their artwork. We appreciate all the work that comes through, but I'm not sure this works as effectively as the really, really classy kind of hidden Aboriginal vector graphics that Nottingham Trent have used within their oversized thread typography on the front cover. This is slightly, slightly more contrived, whereas this looks very professional and works really effectively. Again, the particular grey that they use to print onto this in conjunction with the matte lamination over the top doesn't work anywhere near as well and isn't as classy as these three that we've already highlighted. All Manchester School of Art ones, these ones, so they do particularly like a grey cover. I think if you were to lean towards one of these three shades, they definitely work better than these two, especially if you're going to laminate over the top, which you should do to prevent the cracking. Or the alternative is to go for one of the colour plan papers and just print the black text over it. I'm not sure whether the white onto the grey is anywhere near as striking as the black onto the grey is. The UCA catalogue here for a long time was one of our favourite catalogues and the things that really make this a winner are the oversized typography throughout. They've got colour pages to act as dividers as you're going through the book. We will talk a little bit about the need to leave white space on the page, but the typography, if you do it well here, oversized, is equally as effective as well. Like we've spoken about, we really, really like this use of an oversized spine. And you can see it here on another catalogue for UCA as well, where they've gone for a white background and they've gone for a red oversized spine. This one they've extended round by about eight mil. These ones probably round by about 12 to 15 mil. Both work and both form a nice differentiation on the spine of your book cover between the background and the spine itself. Switching back from a gray front cover, let's look at predominantly white front covers. So we laid out a few here for you to look at. So again, what immediately jumps out here for you? Which are the ones that are eye-catching? Which are the ones that you kind of don't notice straight away that maybe have a bit more subtlety? Which are the ones that you kind of don't notice at all? So we can see straight away that typography, the 
is going to play a big part in making the front cover jump out at the reader. If you've got a stack of degree show catalogues at the show itself or that you've taken home with you, if you go to free range or you go to one of the other larger group degree shows that they organise around the country, you can maybe get home and you're going to have 10 to 20 catalogues. Which are the ones that are going to leap out at you when you get home that you really want to pick up and read again? So white with the use of bright colour, they seem to be the effective choices here. It's going to be a big decision within your group if you decided to go for displaying one person's art on the front cover of the catalogue. That really gives that particular student prominence. They'd have to be exceptional, I think, to warrant a place on the front cover. So typography, the name of the course and the name of the university and the name of your theme for the degree show is probably the best solution here. I've got a couple in the background here. We've got BA Honours Kingston and we've got Goldsmiths Fine Art and History of the Art, which literally just have one line of text on there, the name of the course and the name of the university. I would say that, that is a little bit of a punt. I mean, there is generous white spaces on there, but I think the typographic solutions work better than the more minimalist solution here. We've got the Glasgow one, which has introduced design elements and little flares on there as well. Quite strong typography here on the photography one. Again, quite a nice, we've always liked this one with the gray, gray spine down there. That might work well quite nicely with an oversized spine as well. This is a silk front cover, 300 gram silk with matte lamination on the outside. <clears throat> silk front cover and silk front cover here. Have a conversation there if you prefer white uncoated or you prefer silk. So I think when we view all these catalogues together immediately, we're obviously drawn to the red of UCA. Again, this is another great catalogue. We've got classy, well done typography. Very easy to do typography badly, but uh, you do well to take a nod from this UCA catalogue from 2014. Oversized spine, white background colour. The Glasgow one with the design elements works well. This is for Leeds, I think. Oh no, this is Kingston. This is Kingston Fine Art again with the jazzy coloured typography on the front cover. Really thin, compact degree show this one. So if you have only got a few students on your course, maybe go for a double page spread, even if you've got kind of 15 or 20 students and you can still just about get up to the thickness of three mil that we need for the spine. Great typography here from Leeds Beckett. So have a look, see what you think works. If there's something you like, you could definitely think about replicating that design for the front cover. Let's dig a little bit deeper then. So we've got 300 gram for the front cover here. So that's got a bit of definite weight to it. Feels substantial. The Leeds Beckett one down here has a 200 gram front cover. So it opens up a lot easier. You can run a, run a hand along there, flatten the pages down. It allows the inside pages to be read more easily. So more substantial 300 gram, slightly flimsier 200 or 250 gram, but it does allow the cover to be opened up. We've got a lot of the catalogues here are uncoated, so that has a more tactile feel. The colors sit on the uncoated a lot softer. You can see there's not particularly a lot of clarity here. When the ink goes down onto the uncoated, it kind of softens up the distinct angles and edges of this photography. Whereas onto silk, a very precise mathematical geometry around this red shape on the front cover of the UCA one. And again on the back, uh, Glasgow is sculpture and fine, it's sculpture and environmental art, so it probably does lend itself more to recycled paper than it does to kind of like a gloss or a silk. So they've probably gone for the right choice here. It's got a bit of a grain in there as well. It's 100% recycled, I think, this front cover, and that'll be 300 gram. You open it up, and again, they've used the same graphic elements on the end papers, which looks really cool. Very nice, compact catalog, this one for Glasgow School of Art. We really like the typography that we've used on these three as well, and on the photography catalog. It's a very simple but effective masthead here that they've gone for. No fuss, we said before, don't reinvent the wheel. Less is often more. And this is a 300 gram silk front cover, matte lamination on the outside, 
and it does work really well and it feels nice when you pick it up as well. We'll bring these two back in. So we'll leave it to you guys to decide what you think about these two front covers. Like we've said, I wonder whether there's more information you can put on this front cover to make your catalogues more distinctive than playing it safe and just going for a simple line of text to describe the course. They're minimal, but are they as eye-catching as some of the others? AUCB in Bournemouth, really, really like this as well. This is very neat. It's almost kind of like a newspaper style masthead. It's all kept together, neat typography, centered on the page, draws the reader's eye in. Could have definitely done with lamination on the front, but it's a nice flimsy cover. I think that's probably 200 gram again. So that opens up. It's got a lot more give there in comparison to this one where it really, really just goes back down. You can see that, you see the dynamics there of that cover retreating to the rest of the book, whereas this one, yes, less weight to it. So white front cover, so we've looked at gray, an alternative is to keep it nice and simple and go for a white front cover on your Degree Show catalog. Loads of different elements you can bring in, typography, add extra colors on there to make it more dynamic or keep it really, really minimal and really simple. We've discussed grey and white Degree Show catalogue front covers, and now let's move on to brilliant, vivid, colourful front covers. So again, let's ask the question, what jumps out here immediately? Which catalogues here do you see straight away as your eye drawn into? Which ones are the exceptional ones? Which ones are striking? We've got different elements here added in again graphically, We've got large typography. We've got more subtle embossing on the front cover of some of them. Some of the examples here we've shown are using GF Smith color plan. A lot of them, the students have printed the color onto our house white paper for a cheaper option and to give you more flexibility throughout the millions of colors that you can get from the CMYK spectrum rather than being limited to the 50 or so actual colored papers that you could go for. So which catalogues here are immediately captivating? Which kind of do you not notice straight away? We've got a selection here. So the Kingston Architecture catalog is printed onto a pop set yellow. Maybe a more visually appealing color has been achieved here by Central St. Martin's MA Photography by printing the yellow. So the Kingston obviously is uncoated background, whereas the brightness of the silk paper that CSM have chosen means that yellow jumps forward toward the reader more. Kingston have used a, a pale green from the colour plan range. We have Hull, How to Cast an Elephant, and we have Glasgow that have printed the green. Again, a decision to be made about which is more effective. We've got a nice vivid blue colour from the UCA's Man Overboard show. We've got three really nice choices here for a black front cover. For a long, long time, we mocked the use of gloss in anything that we printed because uh, it looked cheap and it looked crass. But you can actually see here when you compare these three, the black on the front cover when it's printed onto 300 gram gloss with gloss lamination over the top is a far more dynamic and immediate punchy black than it is when you go for silk paper and you matte laminate over the top, which just softens the black down a little bit. So the Birmingham BA Honours Fine Art Catalog here really, really comes towards the reader. The orange and the red and the yellows on the front cover are striking. It's a decision that you guys have to make. But if you wanted a really punchy black or really punchy any colour, in fact, how about going for a 300 gram gloss cover with gloss lamination over the top to make an immediate impact visually? We've got three here in the pink, the off pink and the red colourway. So this is a really striking pink that they've gone for here, a Swansea. We have a printed red for the Glasgow one with this cool vector shape over the top. This is quite eye-catching when you view it against all the others. And then on a similar vein to the Cambridge University architecture course that we saw in the grey section, we've got the Kingston course here. We've gone for a more muted, kind of dusky pink on the front cover of theirs. It's printed again. This is printed onto Cyclus Offset, which I think we'd have to check, but may well be defunct now. I think that paper mill went under 2018 or 2019. Printing it onto 100% recycled 
really mutes that color down. Maybe that lends itself better to architectural drawings and to the architectural courses. The rest of the work in here as well is obviously exceptional work, but it is more muted and the, color, and the colors are softer onto the 100% recycled paper. As a front cover, I mean, you can immediately see that this more dynamic red jumps out at you more than the more muted architecture red they've gone for there. Again, goldsmiths here have gone for a leather type pattern. So rather than paying the expense of going for a leather material on the front cover, they've rendered the, the brown leather. Typography works again, so strong typography seems to be the way to go forward. Glasgow have gone for a really, really nice kind of chevrons on the front cover of theirs as well, which is quite dramatic. The majority of the catalogue front covers here are just using standard printing, but we do have Kingston who've gone for the embossing on their front cover and Swansea who've gone for gold foiling to add accents to their typography. And we have Coventry who've gone for this really nice sunny orangey yellow color and their masthead is debossed into the front cover. So there might be a specific color that your university would like you to use in which case your hands are tied, but you can see here there's a range of colours that you can choose from and some do work better than others. Again, like we've spoken about, maybe you could go in with another one or two or three courses at your university and maybe one could pick a yellow, one could pick a green, a blue and a red. You could all use similar language or you could use similar position on the typography on the front cover. And then that brings together all of the publications that you guys do, your three or four courses at your university. And it means people can take a nice set away, might make them collectible. Maybe that can be something that then carries on in future years as well. You could set a precedent. So I think there are a lot of winning designs out of these selections. We really like the commentary one, the simplicity of it. It does have the name of the course and the university down the spine in white. The, uh, the debossing on the front cover. I think the orange, it's the sunny colour that they've gone for on the cover is particularly nice. I think Central St Martins is pretty much as perfect as you can get for a front cover. Awesome typography, um, a really, really vibrant, captivating yellow colour onto 300 gram silk with matte lamination over the top of it. That really jumps out at the reader. We love, we love Man Overboard. We like the freeness of their masthead and their typography on the front cover. They're not constrained. I think this is probably a hand-drawn font. Again, the UCA catalogues around 2012 to 2014 really, really set themselves apart. They really were brilliant compared to everything else that was coming through. We've got these awesome graphic elements all the way through. We've got typography. It's actually printed in two color all the way through this one as well. So all of the artwork has been converted into a, a dark orange and a, and a, and a blue color. It's slightly smaller than A5 as well, which is a nice bespoke size, so it does stand out. You can see immediately when compared to A5, it's a little bit different. We love the visual language that Glasgow have used here. Iconic kind of road sign language almost. Um, we are going to be drawn back again to this gloss font cover on the Birmingham one. It does look great. We like the graphic elements that Glasgow have used here. These were for separate years, but they've obviously tried to continue the tradition of using nice white vector graphics on the front cover, not including the course. Actually, they did include the course on the spine on this one, but not the previous year, but just choosing nice bright colors to draw in the reader, to make the catalog cover look stunning. They're classy with the white vectors over the top of the color, colors printed onto 300 gram uncoated, matte lamination on both of them to prevent the ink cracking. House to Cast an Elephant is a really neat A5 landscape catalogue. And again, just simple typography on the front cover. A5 landscape lends itself well to showing off both portrait and landscape artwork throughout. And you get a really nice wide page to put the student's contact details on. Slightly more muted, these two, so a, a dusky pink and the leather texture that goldsmiths have gone for. They've gone for a really sort of flimsy 200 gram uncoated cover with matte lamination on the outside. And Kingston here went for cyclus offset, which is 100% recycled. It is gonna mute down your images. They won't look the same as they do on screen. 
and the edges and the finite details that you're gonna get aren't gonna be quite as precise when printing onto 100% recycled paper as they would if you went for silk. I hope that's given you a great oversight into the different elements that you can use to make a really, really striking and captivating front cover on your Degree Show catalog. Obviously, never judge a book by its cover, but on this particular section of the guide, we have done. So we spoke about going for a coloured option to give the front cover a lot of vibrancy. If you can't choose which precise colour to go for, why not go for all of them? Here we've done UWE's catalogue, a 2014 photography catalogue. They've split the cover into many, many pixels and just included as many colours as they can think of. It's actually a really, really successful front cover, this one. Quite a nice bespoke size. I think it's about 270 by 210. So that works really well. Now we're gonna look at dark options for front covers. So we've looked at gray, we've looked at white. We're gonna look at really dark choices now. So maybe some print specs don't work quite as well as they were first envisioned to. Here we've got Camberwell's This Is War catalog. And I don't wanna be overly critical, but maybe it might have resulted in a better looking catalog if they hadn't chosen this particular option for the front cover. So they've gone for 140 GSM Plyke Dark Blue and they've gone for a bronze metallic ink over the top of it. It's hard to pin down exactly why it doesn't work, but I haven't had this in the office for years and years now. Uh, when we come to send out paper sample and degree show catalog sample packs, this one always gets passed over, just because it's got a fairly nondescript front cover. Yes, it's minimalist, and it's similar to some of the white ones that we've done in the past, but if people are gonna visit 10 or 20 shows over the course of the week, you really wanna make sure that your front cover is engaging and continue draws the reader back to it and to your work inside. Such an important publication, it is a bit of a punt to go for a white cover in the same way as it is to go for a, a completely plain black cover. With black, it feels a bit more dynamic, a bit classier. You really wanna create maximum impact, I think, with your front cover. So the colors and the punchy typography that we've seen or a captivating image on the front cover with use of some of the premium extras if your budget allows, I think it's a better way to go. So this is dark blue plaque with bronze ink over the top. We've got the Goldsmiths catalog here, which is 270 GSM color plan ebony, and it's got white foil and it's got gloss spot UV varnish on there. So they've used the white foil to bring out the theme and the title of the show, and then they've gone for the spot UV varnish to really, really subtly add some more accents on there, vector images. These were repeated throughout the book. So for cohesion throughout the publication, these vector images were used all the way through. There again, we've got matter made up of the vector shapes. So, I mean, as far as classy front covers go, Colour plan, ebony black is an absolute winner. So again, we've got uh, Kent School of Architecture. The architecture books tend to be really, really chunky. So this is 270 ebony black again. And again, they've gone for gloss spot UV varnish over the front. So initially, when you look at it, it appears to be just a flat black cover. When you look at it closer, you tilt it towards the light, you get the really, really nice detail shimmering in the light. slight variation on that is this beautiful book for Kingston graphic design from 2012. This initially started off as a print run of 100 and they liked the concept more and more but by the time we were finished we ended up printing 2,000 copies. So they've gone for 380 GSM Skin Curious Black which is an Antalis um, RJ Wiggins paper. I think it's still available. It's quite similar to Plyke in that it's sort of rubbery feel, it sort of has a similar finish to what you'd get with um, soft touch lamination. And then over the top again, it's got the gloss spot UV over there to add the uh, content and the name of the course in the top left hand corner and to add their uh, logo for the show through the center. Um, the advantage of this and all of the black papers is because it's the actual paper itself that stained the color, um, you don't have to laminate over the top because the fibers in the paper are already embedded with the black, so they don't crack, so it gives you a bit more flexibility. Um, but this is really, really nice. So 380 GSM Skin Curious Black with gloss lamination over the front. Nottingham Trent, again, slightly different variation. 
They've gone for 300 GSM silk. They have added lamination to prevent the ink cracking. And then they've gone for gold foiling for their masthead and the name of the university at the bottom. Again, very effective. This is a super, super chunky book, this one at 346 inside pages. So each student is given one, two, three, three pages for their photography. Um, serious number of students on this course, so they had to go for a really, really big book to allow for everybody to get their work in there. It works really well. It's coming up a couple of centimeters thick. So to give you a slight guide on prices, um, these are obviously publications that we've printed over many, many years, so there might be a slight fluctuation, but just to give you a rough ballpark. So Goldsmiths here, um, they've gone for the bespoke size between A5 and A4, um, and they've gone for the white foiling, spot UV varnish, and the ebony black color plan. So they printed 2,000 copies, and that was £6,500. So it comes in around about £3.25 per catalogue. Uh, Nottingham Trent went for a smaller print run of only 360 copies. But this is, like you've seen, a super chunky catalogue with a lot of content in there. And you've got the gold foiling. So 360 copies was £4,000. So that's coming out around, quick maths, that's coming in at £11 a catalogue. The Kingston one here, which is a neater, 64 inside pages. It's A5, so a standard size with the Skin Curious black front cover and the Gloss Spot UV varnish. So they printed 2,000 copies for £4,090. So again, just over £2 a copy on that one. You can see the, you see the difference here between the thickness of these two. So roughly the same price, but Kingston were able to print 2,000 copies, whereas Nottingham Trent printed 360, just because of the pure amount of setup and paper involved in producing that many pages. But black front covers, they are dynamic, they are distinctive. You can add a premium extra over the top to add your content. Obviously we can't print color onto the black because it would get completely washed out, um, but you can add logo, name of the course, some vector graphics, using a premium extra foiling gloss spot UV varnish works really, really well. Okay, so let's move on to the showcase section now. So this is gonna be the part of our video guide that really helps you design and style your catalog this year. So we're gonna start by looking first at the page layout. So these are all great examples. We'll start flicking through and we'll talk over the top. What we suggest on this part of the guide is we'll hold the pages open at certain sections and then you can actually pause the video. If there's a particular layout that you think is gonna work for you, then by all means, pause the video at that section and then you can kind of translate that into InDesign and you can even just kind of copy or replicate that layout. So your creative puzzle is gonna to be to develop a content and graphic system structure for the catalog. The challenge for the catalogue's designers is to create a clean, clear, engaging layout for the diverse selection of information, the different size of content and imagery, while recognising the importance of the book's overall role to actually promote your students' work. The goal is to communicate the student's name, the contact information, their best work, maybe a brief bio too, in a format that invites the reader to not only enjoy the publication, but also hopefully approach the students with a view to a placement or an interview or a job at the end of it. So we start with graphic design catalogues because you guys have been learning your trade for the past three years. So in theory, graphic design and visual communication students should be the ones most adept at producing a layout that really works. So here we've got the UCA catalogue. You've seen this one before, really dynamic typography on the front cover and the oversized spine. So we'll start with this one because maybe this is the winning formula for the page layout. It'd make things easier if it was, and then you don't have to watch the next half an hour. So we've got a right-hand page for the image, and you've got well laid out text on the left-hand side. Use of color on the name. As we looked through all of our catalogs, this isn't something we found very often. Color obviously adds extra emphasis to the name and draws it off the page. It's compact text appropriate sizing, don't be scared by white space. Image on the right hand side, text on the left hand side, and obviously this is A5 landscape as well. So 
So again, this is an effective layout. We've got a bold student's name, easily recognizable when you turn the page. Some students have a double page spread. Some have the extra double page as well. But you've got a bold student's name and then the actual body text below it is eight to 10 point. We believe that that's probably the right size that it should be. We're gonna look at some examples later that are probably overkill the size of the type and go for kind of 12, 14, 16 point. It just looks a little bit naff and a little bit unprofessional. Realistically, eight to 10 point is plenty large enough for people to be able to read it. Glasgow always produce great catalogues and here they've got a tidy professional page grid. So we appreciate your work into a budget. So you may have to choose one page per student or you could increase if costs allow to a chunkier perfect bound book or a thicker book and allocate a double page spread per student. So each student has two pages to showcase their work. That route give, then gives plenty of room to have a brief synopsis of the student. We've even got inspiration here as well. And then they can have text or narrative on, and contact details on one page and on the opposite page there's room for examples of their work. We like the, the neat pagination, the neat page numbers on the Glasgow book here. And again, their actual body text is probably only seven or eight point. So it's neat and succinct on the page. The Loughborough catalog has a really loose, free flowing page layout. But what does main maintain consistent is in the top left hand corner of each of the double page spreads is the student's contact details as an email and also their website as well if they've got it. So as the reader's looking through, they know exactly where to look straight away for that information. We have faded out 60% gray page numbers in the corner. And they're styled with the slightly pixelated, almost computer type pixelation font that they found, which continues all the way through the book as well. We have the name of the university and the date in the bottom right hand corner as well on all of the double page spreads. Like we say, a really loose layout on this one. So what some colleges do is they outsource the design to a local freelance graphic designer. I'm sure they'd be absolutely love to work with your group in preparing the artwork for such a prestigious catalog. Or you can maybe say to each student, look, you've got a double page spread. We need to have these certain aspects consistent on your page, but the rest of the page layout is completely as you'd like it to be. Actually, I have noticed as well on this one that we've got the secondary name of the student across the middle. So in some instances, that's horizontal. Others, it's vertical on the page. It's quite neat as well. Most of the students here have two or three examples of their work on their double page spread. So whilst we're discussing page layout, what we're gonna do at this juncture is dive into InDesign. And we're actually gonna show you blow for blow how to make the same page layout as this top three degree show catalogue of all time page layout from Loughborough. So this is the page here that we're gonna replicate. Let's get started with InDesign. So first up, we go to File, New. We open up a new document and we're gonna make our page width 170 millimeters. For the purposes of this, template we're going to have a hundred inside pages we're going to tick facing pages just because it is easier to design a book with facing pages on then you can see how the double page spreads work together ultimately when we come to export we're going to tick pages rather than spreads because that's how we need the file supplied for artwork we're going to scroll down here and we're going to add three mil bleed and then we're going to click ok and you'll see then that the new page opens up 
So we're going to go to the pages tab over here on the right hand side and scroll down there we can see we've got 100 pages. So the first page is always a, a loose one that's the first right hand page when you open up your books cover. So we're going to jump to the first double page spread which is going to be pages two and three. Obviously you might want to add a few extra pages at the start of your book for credits for the introduction but for the purposes of this template we're just going to work on pages two and three. So we'll zoom out a little bit here so we can see the whole page. So we're going to start by adding the email address and the contact details in the right hand corner so we grab a new text box always like to go for whole numbers when we're doing these kind of things so let's zoom in a little bit and we can get a closer view go back to the text tool let's pick a better font so we're going to go for something standard like helvetica and we're going to choose medium. We're going to put the whole text box content in caps letters. And then we're going to change the font size to seven point so that our text fits within the box. The box is only five mil high. What we're going to do here is we're going to type in the website for that particular student. I'm going to add a little bit of padding between the letters just to bulk it out. So we're going to make sure it's nice and legible. Okay, seven point looks a little bit too large, so we're going to just reduce it down to six point. And then we're going to copy that box. We're going to paste it again, and we're going to rotate the box 90 degrees. And then this is where we're going to put the student's email address. Um, so we're just nudging the measurements down, so it's uh, in a more similar position to where it was on the Loughborough one. And then we're going to justify all of the text in the box right so that no matter how long the email address is, it always ends up finishing in that same point at the top right hand corner. Nudge it down a fraction. And then we're going to retype the email address into the box. Right, again, we're going to now copy the box again. And here we're going to start adding some body text. So just to make it slightly easier, you just copy the text box we've already got. You could easily just create a new text box and start typing in there. But we'll go with the one that we've already got. So we copy and paste that. We drag out the handle in the bottom right hand corner to make this text box a lot bigger for the body text content. And then we're going to start typing some body text in. So we're going to put some text about your work that really entices people to read more, to find out a bit about your practice, your creative mindset, and ultimately spend more time on the page looking at your work. So let's just copy and paste that paragraph a few times. Body text, so we're going to make it a little bit bigger. So let's take that up to eight point. And we can lose a couple of paragraphs here. So we can neatly fit three paragraphs within that body text box. We're going to close up the padding between the letters back down to 50. So it's not quite so elongated. And we're going to set it in eight point. Again, a few different ways to do this, but we're going to copy that text box. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then this is where we're going to start adding a caption on our first image. So let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing a little bit clearer. And we'll start adding a caption for the image. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
again let's just tidy up the size of the actual text box itself so we'll make it three mil high because it's going to be quite a subtle caption around the uh, image itself then we're going to start adding a line next to that picture credit for a bit of styling just grounds the picture credit a little bit so it's not floating in the middle of the page again let's make sure that the uh, top of the line and the top of the text start in the same position on the page for neatness so we will just nudge this text box up slightly I want to make sure it's relatively spot on although we are guessing with the measurements on this we're not doing it precise to the love pro template but it's going to give you a flavor of how to do it um so we just drop down a guide there uh, make sure it's spot on then we can click the guide again and press delete and the guide will disappear so now you can see we're starting to build up a good chunk of the page so we're going to get a rectangle frame tool now and this is going to be our picture box so we're going to click and drag that and it does extend across the double page spread to the right hand page. Again, we're guessing at the measurements slightly here, but you get an idea of how to do this. And we're going to go to our desktop, we're going to choose our appropriate folder and then we're going to pick an image that we'd like to bring in. So to get to that menu, just do Control D to place an image within a picture box. So that's the one we've chosen. We then go to the white arrow tool. We click the image and then we scale it from the center of the box. And if you hold shift key while you're hitting the up and down arrows there on the dimensions, it uh, drops the dimensions and the percentage down up or down by 10% at a time. Makes it slightly quicker rather than just going down in one degree increments so then we can use the white arrow tool and we can use the handles in the corner just to style it out a little bit make sure the image looks good within the constraints of the picture box let's move over now to the right hand page and we're going to copy that image and we're going to start positioning the second image on the page now this second image on the finished books it's going to go right up to the edge, right up to the top edge of the page. So for the purposes of setting it up, we need to make sure that the image goes beyond the black trim line on our InDesign page. So we need to make sure that the image goes right up to the red line. That gives us the three mil bleed that we speak about in in-depth detail on our website and on all of our contacts with you by email. That ensures that if the paper moves slightly when we come to trim and we've just got that extra three mil of your image around the top to trim into. So we'll just line up the bottom of that image box with the bottom of the text that's adjacent to it. Slide it over a little bit. And then we're going to do Control D and then we're going to choose the image that we'd like to drop into that box. We don't want both the images the same, obviously, so we're going to bring a second one in. Again, we're using the white arrow tool. So the black arrow tool moves the box itself and the white arrow tool moves the contents of the box. So we're going to start it. We're going to resize it again from the center of the box. So we click the central one of the little nine squares on the measurements and then we can use the white arrow tool to drag in the handles on all of the edges and we can resize and reposition the image within the picture box. Then we're gonna go and copy the caption from our left hand page and we're gonna bring that over and we're gonna place that caption next to this new image. So we've copied over the, uh, we've copied over the vertical line and we've copied over the image caption. Uh, again, we're not going to be too precise for the purposes of this little showcase to make sure that the uh, caption is in exactly the same distance from the image box as it is over the page. So then we're going to now copy the second image 
and drop it down the page, which is going to give us scope to add a third image on our page layout template. So like we've spoken about, the Loughborough page layout template is quite loose. I'm going to do Control D again, and we're going to place a third image onto our page. So we bring that in, white arrow tool to resize the content, the handles in the corners. If you hold Shift while you're moving the handles, then it scales them in proportion. If you don't hold Shift, then you can kind of elongate your image, slightly butcher it, I guess, to make sure that it fits within the box. But holding Shift is probably best practice, and it ensures that the image isn't skewed and the proportions of the image itself remain the same. So we just use that white arrow tool just to adjust the image within the box. And we're going to go up to the black arrow tool again and we're going to So we're going to copy this text box from the other side and we're going to bring it down and we're going to use this as our university's name in the bottom right hand corner of the page. So just for a little bit of consistency, we're going to try and make sure that that box is the same distance from the top and the side of the page as it is over the leaf. So That's about 14 mil from the edge. Then we're going to change the website to your university 2020. Go back and we now we copy our body text again because we're going to have another chunk of body text here to give you scope to put four, five, six paragraphs about yourself on the double page spread. So we're going to copy the body text block. We're going to bring that over to the right hand page of the double page spread. Slightly readjust it, let's make it a little bit bigger so you can fit some more text in there. And then this new text box that we've just made here is going to be for the larger student's name on the page. So we're going to type a student's first name. And then it's obviously got to be a lot larger than six point to be legible. So we're going to go up to 18 point and then we're going to really, really going to add a lot of padding into the student's name. So we're going to try 1200. What they've done on the Loughborough one is they've made sure that the first name and the surname of the student have identical lengths. So that's quite easy to do. So we just make sure that we pad them out to the same length. So let's type the surname in there, which then you can see straight away means that the first name is a lot shorter. A little bit of text styling here. So we'll make the surname bold and we'll make the first name light just for a bit more differentiation between them. And then we're gonna to have to just trial and error it just to try and get the first name to the same length as the surname, that's not far off. So we're getting closer, so now we can zoom in. Let's try and get these two E's lined up. 
and then we can use the shift key and we can just nudge back a little bit yep that's nigh on perfect so we go with that we're going to copy the caption over we can copy the caption down to here rotate it by 90 degrees and we add the third caption to this third image down here so we can see that the left hand edge of that image is on 238 millimeters so we can make sure that the captions on 238 as well we can move it up slightly so it's uh, more consistent with the position away from the image on the other two as well very neat and we can uh, go up and we can save our page InDesign does have an abort feature, I think, where if you d it does crash halfway through working on it, it will bring you back now. It's not like it was 20 years ago, where if you had done two hours worth of work and the computer crashed, you'd lost a whole lot. A bit more intuitive. So uh, what we can do then, if we save it at that point, then we can go select all. So that's command A. That selects everything that you've got on the page. We can then copy it. So control C. We can then go across to uh, pages four and five, which you can see here on the pages tab. So the next double page spread. If you then go copy and paste in place, it will then paste the content into exactly the same position on the new spread. So you can do this for all of the spreads all the way through the book. If you'd like all of the double page spreads to have the same page layout, it's an easy way to do it. You can then pass those on to the individual students or the person who's preparing the catalogue can then restyle and drop in images and drop in the relevant content for each of the students on your course. I hope that helped. What we might well do in the next few weeks is go back and look at some of the other winning solutions that we found for page layout on our Degree Show catalogues and we might also add templates that you can download from our website with some of those styles on as well. But let's get back to the guide. So we've spoken about producing a coherent design template that multiple courses can use. And here Campbell in 2019 combined four courses work into one bulkier publication. So we've got sculpture, photography, painting, and drawing. It's perhaps, uh, and we've got 200 pages all together. Each section is bookended with a title page. So this is definitely gonna save you money as a university here because we've only got one print run and one lot of binding. So all four courses can then club together and place the order at the same time. Uh, this is one way to do it. What Glasgow do as well is they'll have a coherent style throughout um, two or three courses, but they'll all produce individual books to keep a little bit more individuality between the courses. Again on this, we've got consistent contact details. The reader always knows where to look on each of the pages. Each of the students has got a single page spread and there are some introductions as well and credit sections within each of the four parts. Save room at the end for credits and to thank your tutors. Nice chunky 240 by 170 bespoke size and 200 inside pages. They've kind of got around the uh, issue of the fact that they've combined four courses into one by having a completely blank and, and uh, nondescript front cover. But I guess if everybody at the university on that particular day was giving out the same catalogue, then um, the visitor is going to know which one to pick up for the course that they're after. Liverpool graphic design. So we've spoken about the effective use of spot UV varnish on the front cover. And then we've got a nice styling, an unobtrusive page. The text is just really neat, uh, hidden away in the corner. It's there on every page, but it's an afterthought and definite sort of prominence on the pages is the artwork of the students. Again, their name's there if you look for it but it's unobtrusive, page numbers as well. So our two P's worth 
on this would be to keep your contact details compact and relatively straightforward. If you have someone on the course with an exceptionally long name, then typographically, it might look great if everybody else's name is set at 120 point, but that particular student might actually struggle to squeeze their entire name on the double page spread. I would suggest that the artwork is the most visually enticing part of the page, so that should have the most prominence and the highest page rank. And then once the reader is drawn in, they can then look for the contact details afterwards. Two forty by one seventy, so you get plenty of room on the page for a really, really large image. And you can have the the uh, type at kind of seven or eight point, and it doesn't conflict with the image. Goldsmith's BA Fine Art. Really nice handheld bespoke size, handy companion, slightly smaller than A5, slightly larger than A6. Really like the use of the vertical names tucked inside the leading edge on these pages. Bold, so they are quite obvious, but they're nice when you flick through like that, they're almost like a tab system. Everybody's in alphabetical order. Make sure when you are designing that they're kept at least three mil, but ideally five mil from the page edge. There's always a little bit of movement when we come to trim pages. You can imagine if you're printing a thousand copies of these books and the book's got 200 pages, we could have kind of 20,000 sheets stacked on top of each other. Paper's a natural material, so it does move as the guillotine blade comes down. If you're trying to align text within one mil of the edge it looks great on a pdf but in the actual print process it's really really going to hinder the trimming so if you can have everything starting five mil from the edge of all the pages that means if it does move by a millimeter or two then you've still got a little bit of leeway and you don't start losing letter forms or page numbers in the trimming process <laughs> Again, maybe leave some room at the start for an essay, a synopsis of your years at university. Thank you to the tutors. Credit section at the back. Maybe you've got some sponsors as well that might need their logos to be included. An example here of a neat, compact, wire-stitched booklet. The extended diploma at Colchester School of Art. Loads of white space on the page. Draws the reader's eye to the artwork first, and then we have a neat ident for each student. Their name in bold, their contact details clearly displayed underneath, and then where they're going to next for their career progression. Final one we'll flag up in this section as we're looking at page layouts. It's not a degree show catalogue, but this is a book that we print regularly for Print Space and the Creative Hub in London. So we really like what they've done with the page numbers here. The nice vehicle with the horizontal line through the centre. Some of the pages have a shade dropped in as the background, which also, as you're flicking through, draws you in to this particular section. So maybe if the whole of the catalogue is your student's work, then you could also have a section with a coloured background, slightly off-white, um, for the essays and for the credits at the start and the finish. Again, unobtrusive type size. Again, an unobtrusive font size here, so it's not creeping into the page, it's there if you need it. Really nice example of a header page or a chapter section.
So as we start looking at the best ways for you to develop a system and a set of graphics and a grid and a layout style, these are some really good examples to get started. Let's keep going with this section then and let's look at maybe some things that you could avoid when you come to prepare your page layout. So here we've got a bespoke handheld size, 148 by 148. Prominence is definitely given to the student's name as the hero and the key info on each page here, which does mean that the artwork itself is really relegated to a secondary position. I mean, do you want to draw that much attention to your names and your contact details rather than the brilliant work that you've produced in three to five years? 148 by 148 obviously does slightly limit the size, but we've seen previously on the Glasgow one there where they came up with a really nice page grid and just made the text a lot smaller, so it then still gave the images plenty of room to breathe. We've got a single page layout per student as well neat wire stitching similarly here is the text that they've used for the student kind of working as well as it could do Here another catalogue which has got the dark grey printed front cover um, and with the matte lamination over the top definitely not as effective as choosing one of the colour plan papers but there are some of the lighter greys that we looked at in the earlier section do work a lot better I think than this dark one. I've got the name vertically down the page so each page has this kind of grey vehicle down the side a tab system which has the name on there in bold Definitely impedes onto the page. We've got QI codes down there as well. So to be fair, each student does get a really nice double page spread and their contact details ident itself. You've got the, the actual image of the student on there as well, which is a nice touch. We've got this gray bar down the side, which is just creeping onto the page and slightly impeding on the images. Oversized spine though, we've spoken about this before, we do love this. So that's kind of six, seven mil around the edge. So Glasgow are absolutely renowned for producing brilliant degree show catalogues. This one I'll highlight though, because of the size of the page numbers. So whereas before they did that really neat 148 by 148 one, it seems like they've just scaled the page numbers up for the following year by the same proportion to, the, to get to the larger page size. I mean, that is absolutely enormous. Um, the cover itself is slick and it's got spot UV varnish over there and the, the typography on the cover is really neat and you get inside and we've got these huge text and the massive page numbers in the corner. So an alternative to that which Goldsmiths has done here, Goldsmiths has got an A4 book so it's a similar size to the Glasgow one, it's just got nice neat page numbers down the side, high visibility for the artist's work, that's given the stature on the page and the artist's name, their contact details, and the page numbers are there, but just not quite as obvious. So this is a really, really nicely done book. Balanced by generous amounts of white space got dynamic artwork on each page which dominates the book it's a4 and it's 330 odd pages so as an indicator on price on this one this was 5,800 pounds and they got 235 copies so if you go for a smaller a5 size with around 60 pages we've spoken about you can get one to two thousand copies for the same price when you start increasing the number of pages inside you are going to be able to get all of your work in there. It's going to look seriously impressive, but obviously there's a huge amount of setup costs and paper involved 
um, we're producing this number of pages so it does just reduce down a little bit the number of copies you can get you might then consider selling this at your show or just giving it away to very kind of high profile people um, in the industry and people who might well be the kind of guys that are looking to give you jobs afterwards eminent people rather than kind of just letting all of your friends and family pick up a copy because this is kind of 20 pounds a book and uh, Birmingham again Birmingham graphic design again we'll just show here that increasing to a4 increasing to a larger size doesn't mean that the size of the font has to follow as well and become equally large still sticking at around about kind of 14 to 20 point for your headers and around eight to 10 point for your body text, still perfectly fine, easily readable. And then it means that the images are spectacular on the page and given high visibility. Here we've got consistent positioning all the way through of the student's name. A couple of paragraphs, or one paragraph, couple of sentences for their bio underneath. and their Behance or their website so that the visitor and the reader of the catalogue knows where to find you. If you're outsourcing design to the same external freelance designer each year, then maybe you could start thinking about coming up with a house style for your catalogues, which follows from year to year. Students can adopt it. Um, so summer course here from uh, Camberwell, MA Visual Arts Printmaking, very similar style as we've gone for a bold colour in the background, compact professional idents for the students. Font size doesn't need to be enormous to get the message across. Less is often more. The artwork itself has a lot of stature on the page. Central St Martins have definitely been developing a house style from year to year. Uh, we've got the artwork on the left hand side, contact details on the right. We've got well positioned text featured within the block with the hairline horizontal lines across. Don't need huge text. Page numbers here on this, so you can see you can see that we're clearly looking at a house style here. We've got the horizontal lines for consistency, a very similar typeface and type sizing from year to year. Like on the 2019 version, it's the very small, vertically positioned page numbers. This might even be kind of down to five point, but they just don't need to be any bigger. Kind of nice for the reader when they flick through, get a bit of a transition there. So it's going to make your design in the catalogue infinitely easier if you pull up the previous year's catalogue and use that as a base for your publication in this year. As we have mentioned, do feel free to pause this guide as we're going through and you can definitely kind of replicate some of the styling if there's a particular design that you really, really like and it's a winning solution, then it seems a shame not to kind of use it again. We've definitely had examples over the past few years where we've had catalogues that have come through that have looked stark, that have really looked similar to ones that we've got on our um, portfolio on our website. I'm sure that the original designers would be honored <laughs> to have you uh, using their style. Really like these two books and they've both got a graphic identity that follows throughout. So this one, the identity centers on the man overboard theme. So we've got these playful icons throughout the book to tie all the pages together. Each student is encouraged to add some of these onto their page. Bright, bold colors and fun graphic shapes. Really nice catalogue to look through this one. It's printed in two colour as well, which is 
a bit of a challenge for you guys to set up because you do have to convert all your artwork to two Pantones within uh, Photoshop, but it adds a coherence to everybody's work as you flick through it. Goldsmiths came up with a similar approach and they've got these kind of technical drawing, architecturally styled graphics that go all the way through from the spot UV varnishing on the front cover to the contents page. And then again, each student has been encouraged to include the design kind of a section for themselves on their page to tie the whole design of the catalog together. The contact pages have a similar nod to the overall identity. So if you've got the time and the creativity when you come to start putting together the design, why not add some graphic elements um, that go alongside your overall theme that can be included on pages throughout the book to tie it together and breed a familiarity. So from that section, illustration catalogue seems to be a nice segue that we can move over to. So how is the best way to show illustrated work within your design catalogue? Here we've got the Bournemouth illustration catalogue. So they've given each student a single A5 landscape page. Illustrations are nice and vibrant. They've gone for a 300 gram uncoated cover, 115 or 120 gram for the inside pages. Again, Bournemouth illustration here, slightly larger, 240 by 170 this one. Again, onto uncoated, so it feels nice and tactile. Nice graphic spread at the front. Students arranged in alphabetical order. And they haven't been limited to one piece of artwork per page mix it up if you've got two or three pieces that you're particularly proud of from your design. Two ten by two ten this one. So it would be good for either portrait or landscape illustrations. They've segmented off the bottom 15 mil or so of each page to have the students contact details so they use that as a vehicle on each page. And the uh, illustration animation course from Kingston is actually an accompanying CD that went with this one as well. Really, really nice degree show that took place at House of Vans. So they hired the entire venue and they had the display boards up as you walk, walk through the different rooms. Really great event. Um, three colour print throughout, I think, this one. So we've got black and we've got the red and we've got the uh, blue Pantone. Loose page layout. Each individual student has just been given free reign to include their name, the page number, and then their piece of work in a position that they'd like. You could think about getting two or three people on your course to do the entire layout of the catalogue, or you can get each student to kind of do their own and then submit it. That tends to take a little bit longer. So as with anything like this, we've got a huge number of pages here in the Degree Show catalogue. Don't expect it to come together in a few days in a rush at the end. You do really need to start planning in kind of March, April time. Um, at least give yourself a few weeks to put all the content together because to physically putting together 100 or 200 pages of content is going to take a little bit of time to bring that all together and to collate it into InDesign. If the students are preparing the artwork themselves and then sending you a high-res PDF to drop in, obviously saves the number one collaborator a little bit of time. But yeah, you want to be quite strict with the deadline that, you, that uh, everybody has to send their artwork in because there's always a couple of delays. We might check and pre-flight the artwork and there might be amends that need to be made. So if you're doing all that and scrambling around on the day before, we need the artwork to be able to hit your deadline. That's really, really going to be too tight. Allow weeks for this process to take place and then we can get the catalogues back to you in plenty of time. There's nothing worse than on the day of the actual degree show itself having to worry about whether a courier is going to turn up. So we we'll always aim to deliver kind of a day or two beforehand, but if you can allow a week or two beforehand, that takes the stress off for everybody and it ensures that you've got the books in place, ready to go on the day itself.
Following on from that one again, let's touch on these where we've got the addition of a spot Pantone color printing throughout. So Camberwell College of Arts, I've seen this one before, complete unity in the design as a course because the entire catalog is printed in one spot color. So you are gonna to have to be a little bit of a Photoshop ninja to be able to nail this. Basically, you convert all of the images to monotone, then you assign a spot color to it. So they've chosen the blue color here. So every single bit of content is printed in just one color. From a print costing point of view, it does work out a little bit cheaper, but it does mean that every single image is printed in this blue, which is really, really gonna change the appearance of some people's work. And they can attend the exhibition, obviously, though, to see how the actual original artwork was coloured. Uh, we've got the This Is War publication, um, which has the copper Pantone spot colour all the way through. Each student encouraged to convert one of their images to this copper Pantone. So this is five colour because it's CMYK plus the copper. Same with Ravensbourne, CMYK plus the really, really nice luminous orange colour that they've gone for for their theme. Really like the font cover on this one as well. It's a great way to show off what you guys actually look like as a course. And you can't really do that any better than putting yourselves on the front cover. The orange really jumps off the page here. I, I just think that the orange works far better than the more muted copper metallic that Camberwell went for. Nice chunky kind of almost pop art page numbers in the bottom corner. It's not really a template for the pages on this one. Each student was just encouraged to kind of fill the page with a lively arrangement of their images and their contact details. Quite eclectic typography on this one. It's very stylish though and it does work really well. Slightly thinner front cover, I think we're at 200 gram uncoated on this one and 100 or 115 on the inside pages. So it's nice and malleable. But yeah, really, really good solution here by Ravensbourne Graphic Design Course. Let's look at some winning solutions now for how to show your work for a photography catalogue. And we're gonna start with the Central St. Martin's MA Photography. If you're a smaller course and you want a smart, professional looking degree show catalogue, here we've got 20 students. You really will do a lot worse than just replicating the style of this CSM one. 20 students on the course, so with two or three pages per student, it gives you plenty of thickness to perfect bind the book for a professional outcome. The yellow cover with the black type is a real, real winner. Types given scrupulous care. You could easily do this badly. Um, this is Central St. Martins, so everybody expects nothing but the best. Really, really fine typography down the spine as well. Love the styling of this book. 300 gram silk for the front cover, 115 gram uncoated for the inside pages. This is a really, really solid layout for a photography book. Slightly smaller number of pages is the uh, LCC MA photojournalism course. They've gone for saddle stitching, which has the advantage of the pages being able to be pushed completely flat. They have the left hand side reserved for the students contact details and the right hand side for an iconic image that they produced during their time on the course. Decent, solid, consistent page layout from this photography book from Lincoln. Use of horizontal lines across the page. Lovely cover, the blue on the white background is quite striking. The image wrap is great as well. You've seen this one already. I'm not sure what it is about this front cover. But it's basically the white with the matte lamination over the top and this gray spine, I think, that works really well. We just like the, the kind of blocked off 
typography here too. And we get into it and again, the typography is treated with real respect here. It's given loads of white space around on the page. This is a really impressive page layout and would work really well for your photography degree show catalog. Another saddle stitch version, really nice graphic elements on this one from Westminster University. Nice styling all the way through. Wow, that is huge font size here on the name. So this is what we spoke about earlier. You're gonna get away with this until you find that somebody on your course has got a double barreled name and then their font is gonna to have to be quite a bit smaller than everybody else's to fit it in. But then if anybody is called Alma Apt, you're gonna be absolutely fine. Quite dark images on this one, in fact, really, really dark. So the eternal question that we have from printing photography catalogues and also photography books and photo books throughout the year is why do I, my images not look the same in print as they do on my phone or on screen? Well, your screen and your phone are gonna be in RGB, so the colors are gonna be made up from red, green, and blue. We print, as all printers do, in CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. The screen is backlit, so it has a brightness and a vibrancy. Unfortunately, paper doesn't have a light in it. Um, so the images are gonna look flatter on paper. The presses that we use, our HP Indigo presses and our Litho machines, are the best you can buy, the absolute top of the market presses. So what comes off our presses is what it's meant to look like from your artwork. If you allow enough time, a week to six or seven working days, we can run one copy of your catalog first, send it to you so you can see exactly how the images reproduce, then you can drop them back into Photoshop afterwards. You can make the necessary amends, you can brighten them up, and it will mean then that when the final catalogs turn up, you'll know exactly how the images are gonna reproduce and there won't be any nasty surprises. But generally, in print, if you've got really dark images, I would suggest putting them into Photoshop and just increasing the brightness and the contrast a little bit more than you're comfortable with. Ultimately, again, the visitor will see exactly how the artwork looks on your display boards at the exhibition itself. The last thing you want to do is for your page in the catalogue to turn up and the image to be completely incomprehensible because it's so dark. Um, so just add that extra little bit of uh, brightness and contrast in there, tweak the levels slightly, if it prints slightly lighter than you'd like in the catalogue, that's fine because they can see exactly how it should look on your display board. Really nice catalogue for UWE photography course out in Bristol. It's almost like the, the type setting and the student ident on their page is quite newspaper-like. It's very kind of pronounced, it's very regal. It's given its own area on the page. It's really, really good, this one, really effective solution. It's quite editorial. So these are some great winning solutions for how you can display your work in a photographic degree show catalog for your BA or MA photography course. UWE here have gone for a slightly larger size, so they've gone for 270 by 210, which obviously means that they can get more content on at a larger size than if you went for A5. Downside is it's obviously bigger for people to carry away with them at the end of the show, heavier for you to post out, and obviously we can only print two pages per sheet rather than four, which we can at A5, so it does increase the print cost slightly. These are the things that you have to weigh up, but we can definitely quote for one or two options for you when you come through to get a quote for your catalogue and you can see what works best against your budget. BA Fine Art Courses are a particularly prolific source of degree show catalogues, so let's look at six here and see how they all came up with a really, really good solution to show their courses work. You couldn't pick two more polar opposite solutions than what we've got here for Birmingham and for Newcastle, but they both work equally as well. So the Newcastle one almost feels like an object in itself. I've spoken about this before, but the, the mark that they've used on the front cover here to emboss 
like a like a slab of stone a5 landscape it's a chunky old book it's like 128 pages really really impressive tome and a really really good recollection and record of the exhibition so each student has a double page spread to fill nice use of the horizontal lines to break up between the student's name and their biography underneath their contact details we've got kind of little flourishes on the page we've got multiple images really really well done the start and the end again we've got the thanks section uh, the sponsors logos picture of the course itself always good to include one of those so people can remember your face if they have met you and spoken to you at the degree show itself I want to make it as easy as possible for you guys to get jobs at the end of this so make yourself as approachable and as communicative as possible with the visitor who may be looking at this on the train home or in the office when they get back to work the following day. Birmingham have gone for this 300 gram gloss front cover with the gloss lamination over the top, text down the spine, bespoke size between A5 and A4. With a fine art course, there's obviously going to be all sorts of different shapes and sizes and mediums of artwork that you need to squeeze in. So it's kind of a, a bit of a juggling act. It's a bit like the Krypton factor, deciding how everything fits together. It might work if you have like a grid layout, so at least you know where some elements on the page are actually going to go. Really impressive double page spread there with the image going all the way across and loads and loads of white space around the edge. Fine art courses, bright, colourful, loads of creativity. So Kingston have kind of embraced that with the graphic language on their book. We haven't seen a front cover like this, but it works really well. It's quite a flimsy front cover. I think it's 200 or 250 grams. So again, it opens up and so it opens up effectively. What Kingston have done is they, this is one of the rare occurrences where this has happened in all of the catalogues that we've looked through. They haven't actually credited the students on their work as you go through the pages. So it's kind of a little bit of guesswork, but I guess what they're hoping is when you've gone to the exhibition itself, you'll then be able to pick out, uh, for example, page 26. That was done by Alfie Dwyer. So everybody's name is listed at the back, but not as you go through the book. Again, I'd say that's brave and might be a little bit of a punt. At the end of the day, you do want to promote yourselves, so make that as easy as possible for the visitor and the reader to see who you are and who did which piece of work. The Margaret School of Art in Birmingham have managed to go for slightly smaller typography on their page, which then means that the images get a lot more room. quite like the way that some of them actually go across the double page spread as well. So each student isn't actually restricted to one page. They've kind of got a double page spread between them, but there is still loads and loads of white space and loads of room on there because of the neat, more succinct typeface and, and font size that they've used. This double page spread even has three people's artwork on there, but it still doesn't feel cramped. Slightly larger text at the start of the book with the overview from the course head. And this is actually for fine art. So again, it's a, it's a kind of combination of shows because it's an MA show. So each course might have a smaller number of students. So they've all combined together, but they can still then make an impressive 50 or 60 page book at the end of it. Rather than kind of, if you've only got a handful of students on your course, you wouldn't want to print a flimsy leaflet, which could easily get lost. So if you combine together, you can make more of an impressive finished book. Goldsmiths and Newcastle here both go for a 210 by 210 square option, which lends itself well to both landscape and portrait work. The Newcastle one, they've really, really gone to town on the size of their images on this, really, really making them as high impact as possible, and also the size of the font. Some of the pages have a band down the side. Some of them just have the student's name overlaying onto the artwork behind, but they have really, really tried to create as much impact as possible with the sizing of the artwork on this one. Newcastle do do really good fine art catalogues. This one is probably close to 200 pages again. Again, you've got a snapshot of the students at the end. Goldsmith is slightly smaller. This is fine art and history of art. 
But again, really wow factor image sizes that they've gone for on the page. This is 130 silk. A lot of the catalogues in this particular sector go for uncoated, but Goldsmiths have gone for silk just so the images and the colors get a little bit more punch. And that's contrasted with the off-white color that we've gone for the front cover. So color plan is gonna be a more expensive choice or you can just print a subtle kind of beige or yellow color over our house uncoated for a far more cost-effective option. So fine artwork, loads of different mediums to showcase. Bringing them all together in one book is gonna make them coherent for the whole course. In the actual exhibition itself, there's gonna be things hanging off the wall, things on the floor, actual prints of acrylics. Big, big combination. Um, going for the grid layout, where at least on all of the pages, everything is in a certain position, is gonna make it easier for, for you to design. As we've seen here with the Margaret one, mixing it up and going for a smaller typeface means that you've got plenty of room left for your artwork. How do you depict 3D work in a 2D medium? So we're gonna look at a few courses now which have really, really done that successfully. So we've got ceramics, we've got jewelry, we've got fashion design, and we've got textiles as well. So some great examples here of how different courses have conquered it. We're just gonna open up the pages and you can see exactly kind of page layouts, and what works really well. Some of the 3D courses actually work exceptionally well in print and it gives you the freedom to enlarge parts of the finer detail of the pieces. You can really, really see there the layers of the wool and the skills of the embroidery of the particular student. This text here is getting perilously close to the edge though. Um, so like we said, allow it five mil around the, around the edge. That's one or two mil, and if that had moved a little bit more, um, people would have started to lose their contact details. So allow a good five mil safe area. So yeah, we can really, really see the detail of the embroidery and of the knitting. Glasgow here choosing a similar style for two of the courses that year, fashion design and textile design. Quite like the huge blocks of white here. Print and even wit, the University of Bournemouth. Quite nice to showcase one piece at a larger size and then a smaller enlarged detail on the page as well. Double page spreads again. Always, always thought that embroidery and knitting and fine detail lended itself really, really well to degree show catalogues. So if you're on a jewellery course, you're on a knitting course, embroidery, needlepoint, textile design, all of those work particularly well. Actually, University of Brighton, this one, not University of Bournemouth. Nottingham Trent, going for gold foiling on the front cover. I've gone for 200 gram here though, which is super, super flimsy. It has actually started scratching on the uh, on the black lamination, so that's not worked as well. But again, they've gone for these awesome, awesome enlarged photography pages. Central St Martin's MA Design, Ceramics, Furniture and Jewellery. So a combination of courses at the back, loads of room for their sponsors. It's a huge financial outlay. We appreciate getting the Degree Show catalogue printed. So if you can go in with some eminent companies in your sector or local businesses, then that's a good way of getting your catalogue at least part funded. 
what a lot of colleges have done in the past as well is jumped on Kickstarter. You guys can record some really fun videos of yourselves doing your work or preparing for the degree show. If you put it up there for a month or so, um, and then you can pitch for a specific amount of money that you need to be able to support your catalogue printing and the degree show itself. As you'd expect from Central St Martins, this is a really well done page layout. The different courses are punctuated by chapter headings. It's really nice vector graphics. Nice to have photograph of yourself on the page as well if there's room left. Finally the Central St Martin's jewellery design course and again we've spoken about this is becoming a bit of a house style so each student on this course is sponsored as well. We've got the sponsors logo on there. And an entire A5 page to show their best pieces of work. Finally, as we finish off looking at the different sectors and uh, different subject maps for degree show catalogues, let's look at architecture. Um, and this is where we get some really, really impressive, really, really chunky books. Uh, Kingston Architecture course we printed for many, many years. For a lot of the time, they went for a standard A4. So for a number of years, they had a partnership with UNESCO and some of their sites around the world. So they'd print six different covers between the 1,000 total print run, and then they'd have 167 copies of each, and one would have U on the front, one would have N, E, S, C, O. They'd spot varnish them, they'd foil them, um, they'd letter press them in some instances. Um, that, so that made it really nice. Uh, a couple of years ago, they've changed to just a very, very simple uh, yellow front cover, strong typography on there, and then the inside pages, always go on to Cyclus Offset. So Cyclus Offset is an off-white, 100% recycled paper that does lend itself particularly well to the architectural sector, softens the images, uh, line artwork, sits on it okay, although you do have to be really careful about the strength of your lines for it to actually be visible in some instances. Uh, I don't think Cyclus Offset's actually available anymore. I think the paper mill went out of business a couple of years ago, but there are still 100% recycled options that um, are definitely going to be Kind of more off-white you can see the comparison there between the cyclist offset and our, our white house silk um, it just softens the images down like we say uncoated probably works better for architectural drawings rather than silk which looks a bit more corporate lends itself maybe better to photography um, so a4 uh, an ultimate an ultimate catalog that we've done for kingston though they went for this really really kind of small A6 size, so it's more of a sort of a handheld companion. Um, architectural drawings have got really, really fine detail, really precise mark making that doesn't need to be looked at to be understood. And I think it might be better going for the larger A4 size than this really, really small compact A6 one where it's really hard to see what's going on. Um, again, they've gone for the cyclist offset, so they've ended up with 240 inside pages here. Uh, I'm not a particular fan of this front cover either. It's just really, really kind of flat. And I'm sure that you could come up with something a little bit more impressive than just simply one line of text uh, and an off peach color for the front cover. Uh, Kent really, really set the bar with their architectural degree show catalog. So here we've got a uh, color plan on the front cover. We've got their logo, spot UV varnish. This is uber, uber stylish. 270 GSM colour plan, gloss spot UV varnish. Very, very effective student content box. Really, really like this. This is one of the best we've seen out of hundreds, if not thousands, of degree show catalogues. So along the edge of each page, same position, every single page, you've got the photo of the student in a circular in image box. You've got the name, and then you've got a bio. Really, really small, compact typeface about the student and about their work and their experience at college. They've also then got the vertical tab.
tabbing system down the edge of the page so you can flip through and you can see which stage um, of the course they're showcasing. I presume that must be why architectural degree show catalogues are significantly larger than some of the other courses. It's because there are year groups from three, four and five years that they have to include. I'm just thinking out loud there, but maybe that's it. Nice full colour images, again, 100% recycled paper. Precise typography as well, it just looks, it just looks prodigious. So kind of regimented, as you'd expect from a group of architecture students. And you know, oh, that's a nice page as well, that's a really nice way to do your year groups photo. Another catalogue for Kent. And the challenge here is to develop a page structure that basically accommodates the huge depth of information that they need to include with some degree of clarity. You've got 350 pages densely packed with the work of many, many students. So the publications are equally a catalogue as well as kind of an encyclopedia of their work. Massive, massive fans of having page breaks throughout the catalogue which have these coloured backgrounds just to differentiate that particular section and that chapter heading from the rest of the pages, the students work where it's got the white background. Again, they've got a really, really nice student ident. So we've got the bio in the box with the dashed hairlines going across to the image. Each student gets a double page spread, but clearly the volume of the students over year threes, four and five means that they have to get to such a chunky publication to actually include everybody's work. So we've got really, really clear, precise typography. Again, the punctuated text pages are on these yellow backgrounds. We are really, really gonna start pushing yellow front covers, I think, on all the work we do. We absolutely love it. It just stands out so much better than the, this, this dull one from Kingston or the other ones that we spoke about earlier where you've just got a white background and one line of text. Go for a nice, bright, vivid yellow and really, really make your course stand out. So again, you, do, you are gonna to have to appreciate that with this amount of work going in there and 350 pages, it's not all gonna to come together overnight. This is gonna take weeks, if not a month or two of preparation to ensure that everybody's work is in there. You need to kind of float it back around within the year group, make sure there's no typos, run it past tutors and make sure that everybody's happy with what you've got in there. Then you can send it to, over to us. We then do a thorough pre-flight again. If anything doesn't look right with the artwork, we always flag it up rather than just going ahead to print. We'll do our absolute best to spot anything that doesn't look quite right. Here we've got page numbers brilliantly far away from the edge of the page. They're all in a same position all the way through, kind of eight to 10 mil away from the edge, so there's no danger of them slipping off. But they're the kind of things that we look for um, we've got a nice border around the edge of the page here, so we don't have to worry about full bleed. The only images that will have full bleed are these ones with the colour in the background. This is a cracking book, and we're going to include this within our top three degree show catalogues of all time. We love the yellow, we love the precise typography, which is very, very architecturally styled. It goes well with the subject matter. The pages themselves are really well done. We've got a huge wealth of information about each student on the page. Showcase loads and loads of examples of their artwork. We love the chunkiness of this. Really, really nice book. So that's in our top three Degree Show catalogues of all time. To accompany this Degree Show catalog, Kent also did a really cool invite, which we motion cut to size. Here's the video showing that production process. So the other two, filling the other two prestigious spots in our top three degree show catalogues of all time. You've seen them already. The Loughborough BA Graphic Communication Illustration Catalogue and we've got the Central St Martins 2009 Fine Art Catalogue. So both of these very, very noticeable on our shelves of previous work. 
the Loughborough catalog. The front cover is absolutely majestic. We love the really crisp, well thought out typography that's debossed into the front cover, the soft touch lamination, and the use of a fifth spot color as well, which is this pink color, which then, which is also included throughout the book as well in instances. The page layout of this is incredibly well designed. We've got the students' contact details in the top right hand corner. We've got the addition of their name as well featured on the page itself as an ever kind of moving grid layout as you go through. Each student's got quite a lot of flexibility within where their images are positioned. The typeface and the type size is perfect for the page itself. 240 by 170. Perfect bound. We've got a total of about 150 pages on this. There's the pink again at the end. Just everything about this. From the very moment we saw it, I think it was 2016, the moment it came through, we knew this was going to be a cracker. And finally, the Central St. Martin's 2009 Fine Art Catalogue, one of the first degree show catalogues we printed. Still a massive fan of this one. Don't judge a book by its cover, unless the cover looks like this. Look at it, it's absolutely glorious. They nailed the design and the styling that they wanted to. Measurement tables on there, conversion tables, the gold foiling adds a completely unique tip to it. Um, we've got a kind of a generic mid grey front cover we can definitely get something similar and we've got the gold foiling over the top you've got your area here where you'd put your form you'd put your best mate's cat's name you'd put your form tutor inside we've got cyclist offset again actually um, so the images don't bounce off cyclist offset as well as they would do on our house uncoated but it is a very tactile 100 percent recycled paper the chapter headings are really cool on this as well so this is everybody whose surname begins with h they're, they're featured underneath and then you follow the pages through and you find all their work. Really nice way to do it. Succinct names in the corners. No page numbers you'll notice on this one so it doesn't crowd the page. Central St Martin's work obviously is exceptional anyway once you start looking at the content. So like we said, when this was unveiled at the show, the tutors at Central St. Martin said this set a standard and a new benchmark for catalogue design. They were very, very impressed with this. And since then, we've gone on to print a lot more catalogues for Central St. Martin's off the back of this and off the back of the fact that we can add these creative flourishes on there. We don't restrict you. We'll try and do whatever we can to ensure your catalogue arrives exactly the same as your initial design thoughts were. So our top three degree show catalogues of all time, we've got two at A5, we've got one at 240 by 170, we've got the Kent School of Architecture one, which is particularly impressive because it is sheer size and scale. It's almost an encyclopedia as well as a catalogue packed of, with information. The yellow really, really punctuates some of the crucial pages. We've got the Loughra one with this amazing debossing on the front cover, the soft touch and the excellent graphic design all the way through. And we've got the Central St. Martin's one, which has this kitsch, old school, maths textbook style. Cool foiling over the top. 
and it was one of the first catalogues we did, so it's always got a little special place in our hearts. So there you go, that was our definitive guide on printing a degree show catalogue at XYZ. Wow, that was a monster right. Did you watch did you did you watch it in one go? Whew, good on you. I hope we gave you plenty of ideas and inspiration on what can be achieved with your publication this year. Our aim is to get the idea from your brain and into print. So we've showed the options available for your print spec, the paper choices, the finishes and weights, the size, the binding choices, as well as numerous premium options that you can add to the front cover to make it really, really eye-catching. At XYZ, we have a passion for Degree Show catalogues because of the creative solutions that you guys bring to the table. It's rare to find such a wide range of exciting print specs. When you move into industry, a client's gonna have a specific brief and needs that you need to match, but for the Degree Show catalog, you guys are the clients, so that means it lends itself to loads of brilliant solutions to make a stylish, professional publication. If there's a print spec that you like, then ping us an email and we'll come back to you with a quote on a like-for-like -like publication. There are solutions for all budgets, so if you've got a dozen students and you need a few hundred copies and a compact wire stitch catalogue, then we can print that for a few hundred pounds. At the other end of the scale, if your budget is more substantial, then we can produce a stunning book with the kitchen sink thrown at it that will really wow your show's visitors and showcase your work in the best possible fashion. Of course, there are plenty of options in the middle ground. We don't advertise our prices online because we prefer to open up a conversation with you and find out more about your project first. Yes, there are plenty of print companies where you can get an instant price, but having worked so hard at university for three to five years, and now having had many long nights for weeks and months on the Degree Show catalog itself, do you really now want to just upload your artwork to a website and keep your fingers crossed that what arrives is what you imagined? From your first point of contact with XYZ, we'll give you a wealth of helpful, friendly advice on how to prepare your artwork for print. We'll take you through the entire process. We are always here and our team are accessible and we try and get back to people within minutes, if not within an hour or two of when you email us. Nothing tickles us more than when we chase a quote after a week and the client is still waiting for a price from another printer. I mean, if it takes them a week to get back to you with a quote, how long is it gonna to take to actually print the job? Our intent is clear from the start and we want to help you transform your ideas into print. We take a lot of pride in how responsive and patient our team are. Do read our Trustpilot reviews and you'll see this is really, really appreciated by our customers. When you send the files to us, there are a number of pre-flight checks that we make on the artwork to ensure it's set up correctly for print. If something doesn't look quite right, we always flag it up and we will come back to you first. Do allow an extra few days for this process, but we want to make sure that the artwork is absolutely spot on. If you have any further questions during this stage, then ping us an email or give us a call and we'll be happy to talk you through that particular aspect of setting up your file. If you'd like a paper sample pack to be sent out, because it is always easier when you can feel and touch the papers, then again, there's a form on our website or ping us an email on hello at xyz.co.uk. Ultimately, there is no better feeling than when a glorious stack of boxes arrives and you unpack it and there's your catalogue, your degree show catalogue that you guys worked hard as a group of students to produce, design, and now it's been translated into print. Enjoy the feel and the smell of them. You worked hard for this moment. We look forward to seeing your exciting work and transforming your ideas into print. Thank you very much for watching our guide.